Plan on it, Jeff. Thanks, Tyler. See you, buddy. Good luck, guys. Have a good show. See you, dude. Thanks, buddy. See ya. I like bucket. Do you see me? No, man. Why is your fucking shit so dude, terrible? Dude, I could see everyone and you could see me. That was all we needed, man. We don't care about those other guys. I, I can never you see you, it. man. People made some stupid fucking... Reddit. How can't you see me, man? Someone made know. some stupid hey. Reddit thread about Puckett. He's worked here since he was 16. Dude that was his ass off. We're, we're live, by hey, the way. Hey, guys, listen. Can I... Can it's I Puckett. It's Phuket. There's a thread on Team Liquid called an open letter to MLG. Can I do a dramatic reading of it when we start? Do you want to? Yes. All right, uh, that'll start off the show, followed by how shitty Artes' webcam is. Dude, my camera's He perfect. won the war against know, Day 9, and he comes in... What do you want me to do, in... JB? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I don't know, man. I don't know. Dan, you just want to put a fucking picture in my place. That's what you want to do. You Remember see it. Look, man, there's only so many beaker up. pictures on the internet. You need to calm down, okay? Damn it. He hung up on me. What a fucking bitch. He's back. Turn that shit on. Hold on, I want to see everyone's videos. See if they come in. We get I can see them before, man. I was happy. We get it. <laughs> Don't you fucking steal oh. my thunder. Not for one second. Not we even for one second. I shouldn't have you. see me? You. No, here, you want me to call you guys back? Yeah, I call it and redo it. You know what's going to happen is you're going to get everyone. <laughs> We're gonna get his webcam and nobody else. I love how we hang up and we come back oh. and before it's ever picked up, Jeff's already talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. Oh, oh, it's time. Oh, we got a show. All right, you see everyone? we do. Sick. Hold on, let me tweak the gain on this shit. Someone get so I can retweet. Okay, I'll tweet one second. Adam, you want to tweet? Sure. Get out your phone, man. Wait, why is that? Oh, wait, why? I'm not tweeting. On... Why do you get a computer and I get a phone? What? Why do you get the computer and I get the phone? Because I'm the show host, man. That's, That's just how it goes. I'm not typing on a phone. Adam, which country or which state from the south are you from, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, from Ohio, but it's right on yeah. the West, West Virginia border, so it's even worse. Yep. Tyler, That's did you why. change your fucking Twitter? What the you hell? Cussing at people? No. What? What are you cussing at them? Dude, I cuss at them. Like, you can cuss, but you're just like, why are you friends? They, Look, they get it. You're tweeting. They get Don't it. Don't do that. That's mine. No, nope. you can't. I'm still. I'll move it. on to something else. I'll find something. <laughs> else. I got static comedy going on here. I should I already tweeted him. In control. That's what I'm missing. Eg nice. in control. Okay, there. I retweeted. Go fucking retweet me. I already actually tweeted. You stated game tweet. Yeah. Oh, you already retweeted it? Wait, I tweeted on State of the Game? How do I think... you have 210 PMs on Team Liquid? Because hey, I don't Linux. read that shit. Later, Linux. See you later, buddy. See you guys in like five hours? Yeah, baby. Something like that. See, the, the, the trick behind doing a, a dramatic reading is to actually not read it before you do it. Gotcha. So okay. Everything is an adventure for you as well. Uh, are you guys Hi, ready? People were asking where Day Nine's at. You better. Sean's right. not going to be here. Give him. Give him much more. Are we already time. live? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell him why Sean's not here. Though. Like the big secret. What? There's no secret. What? <laughs> now I want to know what's the secret, yeah. man. All right, we're going, going live. On. We'll see you guys in just one <laughs> second. You'll link it on Team Liquid to you. Bag. What? It's already linked. We can't hear you anymore, Jeff. Be quiet. <laughs> Adam's learning how I run things. Okay. In control against our Tosis debate. And oh, keep going back and forth. That'll be easy.
What? It's still not listed on Team Liquid, dude. If you check out... What? Should I... So I shouldn't fix it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's good. I should leave it. No, man, it's pretty good. Stream's not linked on Team Liquid, man. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I keep telling you. Blame Canada. Yes. Just relink it. Oh, so that entire thing was muted there. What is up, guys? Welcome to State of the Game. February 21st, <laughs> 2012. Yeah, the show we've got in control. Tyler, day nine. Oh, it's God. not going to be here. Artosis, our special guest, the Senior VP of Operations at MLG, Adam Apsella. <sighs> I've already done this before. We'll be talking about pay-per-view. We'll be interviewing Adam, Assembly, GSL Codes, Code A. Uh, Pat, for the biggest tournament of the week in 2012, me and Jeff will be doing a dramatic, and I guess reading or reliving of the Blizzard board meeting to decide that. Interpretation. Interpretation. Yep. Interpretation. Um, State of the game is still not linked on Team Liquid. Look, man. Still not linked. Look, look. Hold on. It's it's, it's just like MLG is going ESEA on us, and they don't like money. Really? Yeah, you got to link it so people know that it's on, so they can watch it, so that you can run commercials and make the money. There. Adam Acapella knows what I'm talking about. Is your last name Acapella? Not close. <laughs> Adam's. They don't actually pronounce the S and C sound in Ohio slash West Virginia, so. There you go. That might be true. All right. So because. This is a weird episode for me, guys, because I'm an MLG employee. I can't, like, interview my boss here. So we're going to be leaving that up to basically Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Tyler <laughs> looks like he's been smoking for a couple weeks in this picture that's still frozen on his webcam. And, uh, Dan, do you ever really interview anyone? Hey, Dan. I'm like the guy who's interviewed everybody. Poop, poop but... Feast 420. Dude, poop Feast 420 does not count. <laughs> Did Tyler die on camera? It's like... Maybe. Oh, he's there. <laughs> he's back. Hey, he's there. JP, man, don't make what? me look bad. What? Don't make me look bad, dude. Now you're just a spinning thing. <laughs> right? Oh, am I? This is your fault. I'm not recalling everyone. We're not starting this episode over because of you, Tyler. <laughs> okay. You just fucked up. All right, man. Get All out right. of here, Tyler. <laughs> I'll leave. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to start off the show with, of course, the pay-per-view thing that MLG announced last. Was that on Monday? That was uh, last Monday, right? It was last, it was last week. Well, I'm sure everyone saw Live on 3 where Sundance gets it, I guess, is probably the best way to describe that episode. <laughs> he gets it. He gets it. Um, so, Jeff... It's more like, look, he gets it. Is, is it look, he gets it? Look, I get it. Okay, look, I get it, Jeff. I understand what Sundance it's, gets, but... It's like... <laughs> Look, I get it. I get uh, it. Fucking fired that guy. Come on. Okay? Look. Look, I get it. Fired that guy too. Okay? I know. The website sucks. Okay? I get it. That's actually... That's how you do it. God damn it, Jeff. Jeff, I'm just going to throw to you first. General thoughts and like first reaction of the pay-per-view. <laughs> I, I want to say, look, I get it so bad. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious note, serious note, I get it, right? Like, uh, you can't make enough money to to uh, be running a lucrative business by just running commercials on tens of thousands of people. It does make a lot of money, but when you're host hosting like a seventy-six thousand prize pool, um, hundred thousand dollars in logistics, or a million dollars, whatever it is, just tons and tons and tons of money. You obviously want to be making money on those events, not just representing your sponsors, not just um, furthering your brand so that down the line you can cash in, right? I understand that. I get it, okay? Look, I get it. Um, the issue that I had, and I ranted and raved about this, and, I'm, and a lot of people talked about it, so I guess we'll just do like a quick extended series. 
on the issue, if you will. Okay. Adam, that's when uh, you've actually already beaten something to death, but then you get an advantage to do it again because they deserve to lose twice because they once lost once. No, so. I, I get it. You get it? <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. In my opinion, the biggest fuck-up in Sundance went so far as to say that he gets it is the, the gold people, okay? Um, basically excluding them from the deal, creating additional content, and then like pointing at the line by line and being like, look, we never promised we'd give you everything. Um, it, it just leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. And again, there's not a whole lot to be said here unless Adam has something new to offer, because basically we, or not wheat, but uh, Sundance said like, it, does, it wasn't right. We shouldn't have done it that way. So that was my first issue, but I was okay with Sundance's answer. I was okay with like, him saying, sometimes we fuck up, we're going to do better in the future. People do fuck up, that happens. Um, then my only other opinion to add to that, I would say, is why the 20 bucks? Why, um, well, okay, I know the why. He gave the answer that we can go down from 20. Um, he's like, maybe it'll be 15, maybe 12, maybe 10, maybe 8. And it's like, yeah, we get it, you're going down from 20. Um, but my problem is, is, is 20 from 0 is a traumatic number. I feel like 20 bucks is unparalleled, unprecedented, and it's just uh, it's high enough of a number where those extremely shallow pockets in the community are going to look at that and say, that is outrageous! You know, and they're going to get really upset. And then they're going to start doing that silly arbitrary math where it's like, well, if I pay for GSL, I get 240,000 games for one-third the price. You know, so, I mean, it was just kind of like you're exposing yourself to that issue. Um, and then again, I like Sundance's answer to this. He basically said, I think it's worth 20 bucks for that weekend. I also think that we can go back from 20 bucks, which is true, and that's actually him being transparent. That's pretty good business response to the community. It's basically saying that's a number that we can back off from because that's that's just good business. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, like the pay-per-view thing. I just want to hear what Adam has to add to it, basically, because everyone already knows the issues, right? Everybody already knows how upset it is. Um, like lay it out for us too. If this weekend, like, what is a win for this weekend? If you guys. I mean, what kind of numbers are we talking about? Those are the kind of questions I'd have for you. Hi, Luca. Um, <laughs> so, um, it's, sorry. I have people watching me at home. I'm, I've been away from my uh, house for a while, so oh, saying sorry. hi to my family. Um, I don't live here, so I come up here with JP, and we, uh, we work away from home. And <laughs> Anyways, to answer your question. Um, so I, I think I, I do agree uh, with the gold member thing. I, I don't necessarily think it should have been included in the deal. I, I think that we added a lot to what gold was originally propositioned as as the, the thing evolved. We took away ads. We added in a blue we added in a blue stream. We added in beta streams. We added in quad view. Um, I don't know if I mentioned we took out ads. Um, but we, we, we improved the product and that's what any company should do. You should improve the product nonstop. Um, I think that we did an awful, awful job of messaging and positioning this pro new product offering. Um, and I also think, though, that next quarter we have uh, bigger goals in mind in terms of the, how many arenas we're going to offer and um, you know just the overall positioning of it. I don't think the $20 uh, price point is what we're uh, going to stick with personally. And I have kind of uh, a lot to say around here, uh, hopefully. Uh, what I want to say here, it's just that I, I think that this product's only going to evolve, and I think that the price point's evolving based on community feedback. We've heard you guys. I understand everyone's pissed off, and I, I don't think twenty point twenty dollar price point for a weekend of pay per view is the right thing. Do do I think though that what we're going to put out this weekend is going to be worth it? I absolutely one thousand percent think it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Um, I think that we're going to put out four streams of competition um, simultaneous over the weekend in ten eighty p. That's 80 hours or 80 hours of content. Um, I think that we're going to Dr. Pepper stream, and we're doing a lot of things that we've never done before. We're, we're aiming for zero downtime. We're aiming for um, some stuff I written JP and I really can't talk about, but just some um, some content that esports organizations have never done before um, in terms of analysis and in between match uh, filler. And uh, we're really excited about it. And if we come out of the, if we come out of the gate, we fall on our face, and we don't live up to the community's ex expectations, then we're going to then we're going to fail to meet um, our expectations internally. We don't have some sales number penciled that says, "Hey, if we don't hit this number, we we screwed up, and we need to we need to rethink it." It's really that 
if we go out and we put on this excellent show, we put on an amazing show, and um, word of mouth, people are like, that's because that's how MLG's really grown is we've never spent a dollar on um, traditional advertising. It's always been word of mouth, and the product we put forth, people, you know, advertise it to their buddy. Um, if we don't come out and put on a good show, then we're going to know it right away because we're not going to be happy with it either, and we uh, obviously won't be charging for the next one. So I, th I think the only thing, like, I, I take great interest in this. I've listened, you know, uh, on, on Inside the Game, Previous Day of the Game, all these shows, uh, either, even Scanner Sweeper, the IPL show. We, we talked about this. It's a big deal because I really feel like this is the future, and a lot of what I'm hearing from you guys that I really appreciate hearing is the honest answer of, look, I don't think we went about this the correct way 100%. Like, it takes a big company slash man to admit that, and I really appreciate that. The only thing I'd want to leave off on this note as we push forward to this other things I'm going to actually demolish you on, because they're really stupid. I get um, it. <laughs> yeah, I know. You will. Believe me. Uh, is, like, like, communicate. Treat, like, the, the, the gold members, their lifeblood. We, I want to hear about hundreds of thousands of people subscribing to MLG and, and giving MLG, like, a oh my god, the next 10 years are paid for. Because for me as a player, coach, commentator, everything, is for me as a StarCraft II enthusiast, that's the future I want. MLG is the most fun I have at a tournament. I am so effing thrilled for Columbus and then Anaheim and so on and so forth. But I want MLG to do really well. But I was very sad and, and not necessarily upset because these kind of things happen, especially in a, a market like this where everything's not set in stone, right? Nobody who knows how to do pay-per-view in a gaming world. Not on this scale. Um, it's been done, but I would say I would say even in the past it's been done incorrectly. Um, it, it's just make sure that you're taking care of the people that are taking care of you, and you're communicating that. And I think you know a smaller price point, like you said, that's already a great idea. Uh, a website that doesn't suck complete ass would be a great future for you guys. Um, and then you know what? MLG is gonna do those awesome tournaments. There's no MLG where people are like, well, Raleigh was really lackluster. No, every MLG event is effing amazing, and everybody has a great time. So that part is secure. So when you say this weekend's going to be worth it, I don't have a doubt in my mind. Uh, Absolutely. I'll, I'll say, pay 20 bucks. I'll say this, Jeff. Um, I've worked here. This is my first job after college. Um, Mike's episode Sunday has founded his company. Um, I was the first employee. And I started here at 21 years old and, you know, obviously been here for nearly a decade. And uh, I didn't have a lot, of say, a lot of say to things you're complaining about now. Uh, things have changed around here. Um, the people that started his company and put out the great tournaments now are saying, hey, our website sucks. This isn't the experience we want. Like we put out this great tournament, and uh, we blow it out. We blow the doors off. You know, um, expectations every single time we improve. And you know, I, you know, of course there's complaints, but you know, we we try to to build on that. We need to have that same experience replicated across all of our offerings, whether it's online, whether it's video, whether it's whatever. And uh, the people that um, put out those same tournaments are now have a say in what you're saying, or what you're saying we're lacking in. And uh, Hopefully we can uh, kind of meet expectations in those areas soon. And Sundance has addressed that. I mean, it's been a tough. It's been a tough end of the year for MLG. Not that anything was like dramatic. It's just like we kind of weren't where we wanted to be, and we recognize that. And hopefully we can we can work to fix it. It's not where we want to be right now, but we're working. I promise you. Everything you just said, we 100% agree. Okay. Cool. Tyler, even though we can't see, you're just a spinning <laughs> globe here on Skype. I don't know what's going on with your. Skype, what, what were your initial reactions to the pay-per-view um, ideal that, that MLG presented and, and also just your thoughts on it as well? Uh, well, I felt like it was something that was inevitable, uh, at least for somebody to try at some point. Um, because, I mean, out of all the, the games that are played competitively, I think it's said time and time again that StarCraft has more of the mature audience and kind of more of the adult audience that has jobs and has, uh, you know, everyone has money to spend, basically. And so you got to tap into that. I mean, people are buying shirts, they're buying merchandise, they're paying monthly passes and stuff like this. And I think it, this was just the next step to have a pay-per-view, like, one weekend event. And uh, I like that it's a bonus thing, which I, I don't think MLG communicated properly uh, right from the start, but you know eventually they did. But this is an event that wouldn't happen if it wasn't for pay-per-view. It's not like an event that was going to happen anyway. It was an event that, at least from my understanding, that it's like, hey, we want to do this thing and we want to do it pay-per-view and see if we can do it pay-per-view. And if we can, then we're going to you know, keep doing it, that kind of thing. But 
you still have the the live events, the basic live events. So I, I feel like it's bolstering the the scene even more with more events, just with this different source of uh, funding, which I think is cool. And like for me personally, I made a little post on Reddit on how like for me there's no like comparable viewing experience like especially when you factor in hours that are convenient for an American like it's very hard to get a high quality tournament like this except for you know other MLGs which I'm always attending um, that you know you can get in 1080p you can get with good casters you can get with a world-class lineup all this stuff like it's actually exactly what I want from a tournament and then uh, you know if I have to pay for it to guarantee that I can keep getting them then I'd happily pay for it I mean I'm gonna pay the 20 bucks and I'm definitely gonna get my money's worth at least you know where I come from so you know I'm all for it man I mean where I come from financially <laughs> like like especially far when you put and you buy one of them TV computers yeah. well guess what man 20 bucks is worth this shit all right so like like I it's hard for me to like see these hardcore StarCraft fans that don't want to pay the twenty bucks for this, but I know they're paying twenty bucks for some other shit that they don't care as much about as this, so the eye of Sauron peers into their pockets. Yeah. You man. bought pizza last week, you selfish yeah. bastard. No, but I, I actually think there's a lot a lot of people that are, are gonna pay for this and I think I agree with Sundance that you've got the you know the vocal minority that's outraged and I'll say this Tyler that the and it's on a scientific poll but the poll that's on Team Liquid um, it's got like I don't even know last time I checked a couple of days ago sixteen thousand votes or whatever um, that was literally the percentages that were listed in that are exactly the percentages that we predicted which is um, you know eleven percent say they're going to buy twelve percent are on the fence twelve percent on the fence. Um, it's the one that was on the front page of Team Liquid. I don't know where it's at. All right. This yeah. is going to blow you away, Adam, but you expecting those numbers was actually the exact reaction I expected of MLG to have about those numbers. <laughs> well, I'll t oh. no, I mean, Jeff, I mean, you, you, look at, you look at UFC, and we're by no, by no means anywhere close to UFC. UFC is just like incredible job, right? I'd, I would love to like, even be in the same sentence as them one day. Um, they, if you look at their lowest, lowest um, spike, if you look at their highest spike lead-in from last year, um, it's viewership number, and you look at their lowest buy rate for a pay-per-view that leads into that show. So say 200,000 purchased and whatever, 1.8 million watched it free. It's like 11 something percent. And we studied a lot of these numbers. We, we uh, studied a lot of pay-per-view trending. Um, from whether it's boxing or UFC or whatever, and we, we, we kind of internally met with a number of like what, what expectations were going to be, and it's pretty much exactly spot on. Um, you know, at 10 to 13 percent of what our audience is, I mean, that's what's going to buy it. And uh, I understand we didn't message this correctly. I understand we did a lot of stuff wrong, and I think that what we're going to announce our next quarter is going to next season is going to uh, ease a lot of those uh, complaints. It. Wait, wait, wait. Next season is in like the non-winter season or like next year? Next season is in the non-winter season, as in, okay. as in the lead up to Anaheim. Cool. Uh, Should we get Dan's thoughts I, on it before we jump Before Dan it? does, though, real quick, just to, I'm, because you've been such a great guest so far, I'm going to give you a gift. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. You need to sell your gold passes online, you dumb, dumb, dumb man. Are we selling them online? You talking to me? I'm talking to you. <laughs> we are selling them online. Yeah, right we're now. putting back online. It was like a, the way I heard it being explained was like. We're selling them in stores domestically. We're selling them online for anybody. So if you're not, you know, in the United States, you can buy them online. But that product's being pulled off the shelves. We're just giving it a limited time offer to, to purchase that. But uh, gold as it exists is not going to, to last for long. Oh, okay. It's going to get reworked. Right. It's actually going to be the best deal we offer um, after we pull it off. And it's not to say that we are going to spike the prices dramatically or anything like that. It's just that uh, we, we're just rethinking the product. We're going to make it actually make sense. Because right now what we do doesn't make sense. We 100% we re we recognize that. And uh, 
hopefully we can get something out there that everyone's okay with. Okay. Dan? Dan, general thoughts, feedback, uh, anything well, about the interview? It has to happen. You know, GOM already does it kind of. You know, not as many people stay up late to get that free stream, so it's kind of like you have to buy it anyways. Uh, but it just, it kind of makes sense. And it's, I actually, I look at MLG putting it at 20 to start, and I think that's smart because that's like, first off, you can measure like they said, and, uh, you know, if you go to like a bar craft or something, uh, you're going to spend that anyways easily, you know, beyond that, because you might have a few drinks and you have to take a taxi home or something. It's just like, uh, it seems, I mean, 20 bucks for like someone that's really poor is pretty expensive, but you can like split it amongst friends and stuff. A lot of people nowadays have those friends that, you know, five people sitting down to watch it for a weekend. That's like $4 a piece. It's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, that was short-winded compared to the other two guys. Jeff, <laughs> I, we're sorry. They're wait, 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 wait. Can you let Jack Nicholson in before you ask me what you were about to say? <laughs> they're, they're building things out right now in, in the uh, in the arena, so it's still Cutting it a little guys. close, aren't we, MLG? Hey, man. <laughs> oh, God, come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously. I get it. He I gets know. it. Okay, what were you going to say, JP? Uh, so this is, I mean... I, I do have some questions prepared for this, but it seems a little bit self-serving. Wait for George to stop hammering one second. It's pronounced Jorge, JP. It might as well be. Um, I, I guess, J Jeff, kind of go and just take the reins of this, and uh, I'll, I'll poke in as... Let me get him to stop. As you see fit. Yeah, I'll go That's tell him. Fine, you stay here and loud. answer questions. Not that loud in our mic, by the way. But okay. Adam, I've uh, got some things to talk to you about with the uh, the winner thing. Thank You're you. the last person we're going to talk to about this. Shut up, G-Off. <laughs> yeah, G-Off. You want to come down there? Stay the game alive or is this dead? I think we're alive. I don't I think know. Alive. I think we're good. All right, Jeff, where did you start off with? I apologize. Right, the well, yeah. let me just state the bandwidth already has been allocated throughout the office, and that is why we probably kept it. You here. would blame it on us I would somehow. Blame it on you. you would blame it on MLG. I would. All right, so for everyone uh, live, I apologize. Um, so, Adam, I'm going to ask you some questions about the winter event. Um, obviously, I, I was asking people earlier today on Twitter, and some of these have kind of already been answered, and you started to answer it, but, of course, you have to repeat it. Sure. So I'm going to ask you. Um, it says in the rules that MLG reserves the right to ask players to wear MLG clothing. Yep. Um, let me say first and foremost that a lot of these rules have been copied since like 2005. Copied and pasted and applied, you know, just directly from game to game. Um, I sent a clarification out to players and uh, team managers today, and it seems like this is the first time they've ac ever actually read the rules, because these aren't new. Um, anything that anybody wore last year is fine. There's no nothing changed. Um, we're not going to ask somebody to wear some like branded arena clothing when they show up. It's basically there so that we reserve the right to Jeff. If you show up and you're wearing like a monster pop can and you're like waddling to the stage as like some fucking monster <laughs> can, I say Jeff, seriously, yeah, yeah, like you can't wear that. And you're like naked underneath, so I have to give you like an MLG shirt to wear. It's like okay, that's what that is. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the plus one. A lot of people thought that this would be a cool opportunity for them to travel with a significant other, see family there. Um, basically, just it was a nice idea for them to include somebody else in the event, but then it turns out that that was specified to be only team managers. Um, so I guess there's a lot of concern that a lot of players are going to play their matches and then leave the venue because they are there with other people that they aren't going to ignore for the entire day. Why did MLG decide to go that route? Always have from the very beginning. That was always the um, the positioning um, from the very first messaging we put out. Uh, it's a space issue, and it's the same thing with the media. Why we don't have outside media in here? It's uh, we're in our we gutted our office and we reformatted into a studio, and uh, we just don't have a lot of room. And I, if Huck's, well, it, uh, hold on one second, Jeff. If if Huck's girlfriend comes, for example, right, and I, we've only had like five plus ones <laughs> asked to come. I'm not gonna be um, I'm not gonna be a dickhead all weekend about it. If if there's space, Huck's girlfriend's sitting outside. Bring her up. I'm not gonna like sit here and be a jerk oh, about hold it. Hold on. Does Huck have a girlfriend? I just have to clarify this. <laughs> Is this actually TMZ? I'm glad that we're doing the hard hitting stuff, JP. I, I just want to know. Say. I gotta clarify. The community wants to know. 
Does anyone if know? Huck did, if if Huck did have a girlfriend, she wouldn't take up a lot of space. So I don't see how that's quite the issue. But also, <laughs> Huck would like me to ask the question like, if you could do a rotation of girlfriends, how many passes can one player get? <laughs> um, Idris can have six. Is it plus one per day or is it per event? You know what I mean? Like, these are the concerns we get. And you know what? Actually, like as I asked this question, I realized. Because you were just explaining that you copy pasted the rules from previous years, I could, I get it. I could see how this wouldn't be a problem. Halo players don't typically have girlfriends. I get that you get it. StarCraft two players always have girlfriends, so I can, I can understand totally how this would be like new territory for you guys. <laughs> I'm glad I heard the silent giggling. What's next? Uh, okay, next one, and this is an actual issue that I, I. You're the, the spin master. One time we had like an impromptu debate about effing extended series in the middle of an MLG, and I was oh, quite Jesus. impressed with your ability to convince yourself of things that are just not even like they don't make sense, and like you. So you so you walked away and benched 450 and didn't understand why you lost the argument. Basically, is what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am going to get pretty adamant about this one because this is this hits me at the core about expanding. Uh, StarCraft 2 and esports in general. Now, I understand the space issue. I get it. Look. I get it too. Get it. Okay? I understand. Um, but guess what? As Tyler would say. It, it's <laughs> uh, I can't continue to defend this, by the way. So if you're going to have a relentless assault on a Sunday <laughs> and sit live on three courts, I have nothing. Not allowing media into your event is trip on your face terribly wrong. Okay, so I understand the space issue. My contention, my argument would be, make the fucking space. I want people to come out from MLG Winter, uh, media people, to write up their articles. Okay, I want them to talk into their computers, and I want them to spread the glory that is how amazing this event was. By blocking them out and saying, we don't have enough room for them. Hey Jeff, no one, ag no one agrees with you more. Not one person. No, I don't. I, I agree with you. What the fuck? I agree with you 100. percent But there's no room. You gotta. They gotta write articles on my shoulders. They gonna sit on my shoulders. This is like the skinny media people. They gonna sit on my lap. I mean, it's just like your players will see it's when American, they, the players will see when they get here. I mean, it's just like it, it. And if, like I said, once players are here, staff is here, and the plus ones are here that they request that were requested, which wasn't as many as we thought, by the way. Five of uh, 32. We, if there's people downstairs doing interviews, we'll say, hey, come on upstairs. But as it, stands, as it stands right now, there's no room. Ready for the logic? 32 And I get it, chat. Get a plus one. Five, as you say, confirmed. But you know what? I'm going to double it. Ten people. Five secret ones. That means there's 12 people that you were planning on being there that aren't. Plus the tournaments. Tournament and broadcast are automatically running by themselves. There's no staff here to run it. There's no, no, no. Those, those are numbers you should have accounted for. Do you get what I'm saying? There's shit I accounted for. That's why I said there's no room for media. I said, 32 plus one. I accounted for all those people being here. There's no room once they're accounted for. So, hence, the media can't come in. Do you think I don't want media here? You don't think I want people knowing that we had this thing? We spent a lot of money and you, a tree fell in the woods and no one heard about it? I mean, it's just like, it doesn't make sense. Of course we want media here. This is so weird. You, I agree with you. It's tough to interview MLG about the things they fuck up on because they agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want. I want to one day. Fuck, it was stupid. <laughs> listen, I want to. I want to have a place one day where we have this incredible studio where we have five hundred to a thousand spectators live, and we have media there, and they're like writing the best stories ever. But right now, this first one, we don't have the capability to do that. Okay. Here's my here's my plan B. You ready? And you don't even have to pay for this. Here we go. Let's do You're it. You're gonna web host the fucking media people. Okay, so I wanna see camera guys with little webcams on their heads walking around <laughs> with an ear mic in, being told by whoever where to go and, and what smart questions to ask. Let's do it. He's in. You're welcome. Thanks, Seth. <laughs> I actually it's uh this is just like that Halo situation where that guy, his friend talked shit on, I mean, his, he didn't talk shit, but he was like, I'll take you up on that show match. And he was like super mannered and nice, and I can't talk shit to him then. He's the nicest kid that can be played How by can the I way. be mad at MLG? You guys are like that cute puppy that shat on itself, but then it looks at you with that, like, just buy my shirt. 
<laughs> he's just buying my shirt. It's like, I can't be mad at you. You guys are awesome. But yeah, get media in there next time. I agreed. Hey, there, there's like some team managers that can double as media, like liquids. Yes. So. Yeah, is that, is that Rich coming as a <laughs> photographer or something like that? <laughs> I don't know who Liquid is sending if they're... I mean, I'm sure they're sending someone, but... I think, I think Rich is coming, and then Hoppit will be as well. Uh, as well. Uh, Jeff, what's up next? What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> I Look, can't dude, ask these questions, I plan on Jeff. any one of those to carry us for at least a fucking hour, okay? So I'm like... <laughs> I bring up, like, this is bad! He's like, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um... I would just say this, like to end it off. I'm excited. This has got to be one of the most jam-packed tournaments ever. This is an amazing bracket. I, I love it. Um, you've got the EG guys killing each other in, in one of the first two rounds. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but I like it. You know, they talked about how expensive it is to fly out all the players. But let me tell you this from the team side, from the player side, which a lot of people don't necessarily get to hear. That's really nice for EG to be able to fly out its players from different parts of the world. Um, it's on MLG's dime mostly. That's a huge help to the team. So when they say they're trying to help out teams in an event like this, you bet your ass that that's what's happening. So um, I know that I know that Sundance took a lot of the people off the fence in that uh, live on three interview and, and put them into the MLG green pastures. But this is just my plea with people: like they fucked up, they admit it, they're saying sorry. But this is going to be a great weekend, and I really hope people support it because it's important for the future of you, uh, of everybody. It's uh it. It's crazy because I read a lot of comments. They're like, if you guys say that you're not making money, why in the hell are you flying people from all over the world? It's not cheap. It's not cheap. But somebody has to pay for it, whether it's teams, whether it's the players, whether it's the league. And it's just like no one's making money. If no one's making money, regardless of who's running the cost, I mean, they're like, just make the teams pay for it. Well, the teams, they, the teams are going to go bankrupt then. Then the players are fucked. So it's just like, yeah, I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Everyone just wants everything for free, but guess what? Shit costs money. Shit's a lot, so, it costs a lot of money. You want to have the best time in the room. And you don't, and you, I want to rely on somebody like Jeff to book his own flight and make it there. It's just like Jeff's round one's going to get caught and he's not going to be there because we relied on Jeff to book his own flight. And it's just like, I don't want Jeff booking his own flight. I want Jeff to be there for sure, ready, not worried about booking his own flight, not worried about his hotel. I want him to play the best game possible, just like an NBA player, an NFL player. We're not there yet. But we want to be. Yeah. We want to be. And uh, I don't think it's that crazy to fly 32 players in, have them focus solely on tournament, and that's it. Not logistics, not airport pickup, not all the little shit that you guys take for granted these guys deal with. Jeff has to worry about just using Jeff as an example. He's in, his, in, the, in the pool player, the bracket MLG, he has to worry about, what am I going to eat? Who's paying for my hotel room? How do I get to the hotel from the airport? And it's just like we're trying to take that stuff out so these guys only worry about competition. And uh, if, it, if it really implodes on us and it doesn't work from a business model, then, yeah, we'll, we'll learn our lesson. But we want to, like, make the players come out and give the best games possible. And we feel like we're doing that. So that's, my, that's my, at least my take on it. Yeah, I'm glad. I mean, like I said, I'm just kind of blown away by how pretty sensible all the answers have been. And I'm, I really appreciate a company that's willing to say, yeah, we'll do better next time. By the way, for all of you guys that weren't online when uh, when the stream went down, Jeff argued with me that sensible wasn't a word, and he just used it. No, sensical. wait. Wait. <laughs> you you sens fucked up. <laughs> sensical. Did you say sensible? Sensible was my word. <laughs> all, right, all right. Fair enough. All right. God damn it. I get uh, it. Jeff. Yeah. Let's move along. What else we got? Um, I just assume later we'll circle around back to talking about the actual draw and stuff. Like as far as logistics yeah. are concerned, I feel like I covered it. Like well, I'm, I'm checking so Twitter, I'm checking the, the chat. Guys, Nobody's saying anything that needs to be brought up. Did you guys happen to read the Arkaka article that went out today, Jeff? Did you see that? I don't speak Swedish. I don't either. No. But... <laughs> this article. Uh, Neither do we, but they actually wrote it in English for fucking to pick a fight. <laughs> I read the punchline, so I know Adam got all fired up on that, and everyone on Twitter who follows him does. Adam, please tell me why you're fired up. I'd love to hear that. I'm not really fired up. It's just uh, I'm disappointed to a degree because I've never – anybody from MLG's never said anything negative about any other esports organization. And uh, it's, I'm just disappointed that an article is written out of the, like, on purpose in English just to call us out on something. Um, I don't know. I just – I feel like they went out of their way – I have to feel like he went out of his way to pick a fight. And uh, no matter what, whether you're working for another organization or not in your free time, you still represent – 
somebody, you, you work for GMAC, you run your events. I just felt it was in poor taste, and I didn't feel like there was much journalistic integrity in uh, that article. And I thought it was very, very sensational. And uh, I don't know, DreamHack goes out and does something. I'm going to hope, no matter what they decide to do, that they're going to, to do it well, and it's going to succeed. Because if DreamHack fails, or IPL fails, or NASL fails, it hurts all of us. It hurts the teams, it hurts the players, it hurts the tournament organizers, because we're all out there trying to sell the same people, and if the, the water's muddy, and there's somebody that did some colossal failure, it affects all of us. And that's the truth of it. So I was just disappointed the article actually aired like that because it was very TMZ, not to use a buzzword. Um, actually, uh, someone just messaged me, another player who's uh, very prevalent at MLGs. Another issue to bring up real quick, I guess, would be it's rule number 11. Players may not have applications, browsers, or streams open other than the StarCraft II launcher. So, of course, the issue here would be Pandora or whatever else they're playing their music on. Some players, that's what they do to get through a game. IPhone, that's how right? they focus. Yep. Um, Is that just another copy-paste type thing? No, it's not. Um, it's actually a legitimate concern. Um, we will be providing mix amps and all the wiring possible that if a player wants to bring an iPod to listen to music, that it will be available to them from a wiring perspective that they can still get game audio and still listen to their music. Um, the reason why we can is uh, we are always under the threat of attack. Um, for that streams will go down and or the competition itself will be uh, the integrity of the competition will be affected through uh, I really want to get into it but we don't want to have um, traffic coming into our firewall um, from an external source so we're trying to minimize any type of penetration there and uh, we would I like when you talk about that yeah penetration <laughs> um, I don't really want to encourage. Wait, wait, wait. I don't want to encourage the activity, but it's uh, it's something we're trying to prevent. The groove sharks and whatever else. We're just StarCraft client is open on desktop, and that's it. Yeah, I'm not, and I will say this, Jeff, and whoever else wants to like yell at me. I am literally the least certified person to defend this, and I know I already sound like an idiot. Um, but Elite Chen or any of the other guys and staff that actually speak this language should be the ones ask, answering this question, but. I'm just saying that we need to make sure that the stream goes out and the competition itself has zero lag, and that's all I'm worried about. Just take up a little bit more bandwidth, I guess. So, yeah. What does when right. you? I mean, it's not about bandwidth. It's just about it's it's security. It's internet security issues. Um. You're like worried about Pandora hacking an MLG or something? No, or? It, I, and like I said, I, I can't. <laughs> Jeff, you don't understand the internet, man. Just shut up now. <laughs> and neither do I. <laughs> it's a joke, Dan. You don't understand sarcasm. Fish. <laughs> Jeff, that was nonsensical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Um, Terrible. I guess a couple other the Twitter ones that just got brought up is like people were asking if you guys are considering one day passes in the future. Obviously at a discounted rate. For like future uh, arenas, we will have um, more to offer next quarter, and I think that the pricing will be very competitive with everything else in the market next quarter, next season, spring season. Um, like I said, we heard you guys loud and clear. I think at least give us the benefit of the doubt. I think that we are going to come out with a product that's worth twenty dollars. I have one hundred percent stand behind that. I've actually tweeted that I will quit if it's not worth it. Um, mm. If it's not worth it, then I don't deserve to work here. Um, but next quarter, I think that we're going to have something that, you know, in terms of benefit of the doubt, we said, you know, you guys said LXP players have an unfair advantage. They get a trip paid for, they don't start an open bracket. We try to rectify that by giving everyone from a global region, regardless of where you're from, an opportunity to get to MLG on our dime and into pool play. Um, I feel like we've given that opportunity. Um, we got rid of uh, the... Rolling rank points. I mean, we, we heard you guys. We know we understand the dissatisfaction with, with the pricing and everything. Just we're we're working on it. I promise. Okay. You guys got anything else about the arena and stuff? Tyler and Artosis just had. I, a really I can read program. the rule changes. If you guys want to read what we were rescinding? No. <laughs> Tyler, do you have any any questions? Uh, I don't think I have any questions, man. So I have some questions since someone else wants to ask them, and this is really <laughs> terrible. But I'm going to ask, as an MLG employee, to one other MLG employee, what's next for the MLG after the arena? Where, where, if this goes well, 
what do we do? Where, where do these funds go? Where can people expect to see MLG kind of prosper if this goes well? What do you, what do you mean? Like, what's like, can you like... If the arena is a positive when it comes to net income, what does MLG do with those funds? <clears throat> um, well, I can tell you from a tournament perspective, I mean, this is definitely not... This is, you guys want something? You want a spoiler? Um, this is definitely not announced. I bet you Katie Goldberg's going to be texting me really angry right now. Um, you want the tur <laughs> you want the tournament That's structure for spring agent. season? Go ahead. The top sixteen from Columbus will be full. I mean, the top sixteen from this winter arena will be flown to Columbus, right? Um, Columbus will happen. It will have the gigantic open bracket and all the like, the the usual um, open competition with the pools that happens at every one of our pro circuits. And after that event, the top eight will be flown to an arena in New York City. Uh, where they will compete, and while that's happening, we'll have some type of very open component for anybody that wants to get into the online brackets in the three regions. We'll be competing. While that's happening, we'll have this arena. The bottom four from that will fall, and they'll fall into the online brackets. The ladders or whatever metric we have will go to the brackets. Online brackets, just like we saw this quarter, will happen, and we'll get 28 players that we've flown to a second arena that will meet with a top four from the first arena to have another 32-man arena. So we'll have two arenas a quarter. Um, and that will again decide the pools for Anaheim. So cool. we want to do more arenas. Definitely don't, we definitely are working on the price points and the packaging and all that stuff. Um, and just end game, we want to have a permanent location where we can have infinite amount of spectators and infinite amount of media and Puck's girlfriends and everything there. <laughs> and it'll, make, it'll be completely sensical. I still don't understand the hoax girlfriend thing. I'll have to ask him about it. Uh, what is with you guys always mentioning Columbus? Why does that always get come up and brought up? With Columbus is a serious location for potentially where we'd build a static studio. We're actually in negotiation with the state to actually build something there, and uh, it's still ongoing and could happen. But there's also other cities in, in, in bidding. <laughs> Someone walked in and just stared at us from MLG. That was weird. Um, and last question. Any idea what sales are so far? Can you link any numbers? Is They're way well? ahead of what I predicted. I buy every UFC pay-per-view, and I don't buy it till three minutes before pay-per-view time, and we're exponentially ahead of where I thought we would be. Okay. Interesting, because actually the numbers that you guys are selling, it's exactly what I thought they would be. Yeah. I made some predictions, like when you first announced this, and exactly what I predicted. Wait, what, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Look, Adam, it's fucked up. Adam, I fired the guy, okay? Like, the guy's <laughs> gone. That guy's gone. We had some, uh, we had to, you know, cut the fat a little bit. That guy's gone. He fucked up. I fucked up because I was responsible for him. He's gone. I get it. Our website is shit. But guess what? <laughs> Money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> Sunday, it's never said that, man. You can't say that. <laughs> Look, JP, okay? I get it. I get it. I can't quote him on everything I, he says, man. I, I don't just tick it off, okay? I really wish we could roll a scro uh, fucking Sir Scoot's picture right now, screaming. <laughs> <laughs> would, that, <laughs> would that complete the live on three for you? I think, I think this might as well be live on three if that happened. Um, uh, is, there any guys you, uh, is there anything else you guys have left for uh, Adam? Because it is kind of late here. No. Uh, I, think, I think we're good Thanks then. Thanks for coming on, Adam. I'm sticking around. I'm not leaving. You're sticking oh, around? You can't kick me off. I, I can't kick him else. off. I'm not leaving. He's not leaving. You're fired right. if you make me leave. All right. Yep. <laughs> you stick around. Uh, let's go into the brackets. These were just announced earlier today. We'll just kind of go around here. Jeff, I want to start with you. I got a lot of shit for saying that the Muslim was going to lose to an ST. Mm. Is he going to beat him? I mean, I, I right behind you. Saying Keep that, that in mind. yeah. I mean, I I actually talked about this on my stream earlier because I did a Q and A and people asked me about it, and I don't think it's wrong to predict that the Muslim's going to lose Nesty as his teammate, as the guy that works with him. What I will say is the Muslim is capable of beating Nesty. Sure. Bottom line. So people can flip out and think I'm biased, or stupid shit, whatever. That's fine. I've seen him beat extremely good Zergs, and I've seen him do it in convincing fashion. So if the Muslim shows up in New York. And he tells himself, look, nobody's expecting me to beat an ST. All the pressure's off my shoulders. I'm the underdog. And then he excels, just like he did at, um, I think it was Raleigh, against multiple Korean opponents on big stages. Obviously, none of them an ST. 
Right. Then the Muslim could turn some heads, and that's what I'm hoping for, man. I always root for the underdog, especially when it's a, a foreigner, and especially when he's on my team, going up against one of the monsters, Nesty. So I'm I'm hoping. I, it, let, let me say something here real quick, Artosis. That uh, I think that <laughs> tournament play at MLG is a little different from other places where we have preparation, pre-preparation, and you, you have to go through a whole weekend. I think if you get past the first round, everything changes. And uh, if he can beat Nesty in the first round, I think that it's just like a, it's just a test of endurance. And it's not necessarily you have a couple of days to prepare for somebody. You're literally like going running through a gamut and a gauntlet. Yeah. So that's my. It's gonna be thing. tough. You know, uh, I actually heard that Nest he is actually really practicing for this event. Uh, He's you flying know, in a day early to get used to. The yeah. Time. Yeah, he, like, actually really wants to win this, and he's, like, actually practicing his ass off really hardcore. So, yeah, the Muslim definitely has the potential to beat him, but uh, Nest, he should be in complete top form for this event. He really wants to win it. So, I I mean, that's... Yeah, he lucked out, and Annie was on the other half of the draw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was that was a nice... The, the top half of this bracket, I feel, is definitely a little bit more heavy than the bottom half. Am I wrong? Oh, I don't know. That? Maybe, but as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty arbitrary. Like, on the bottom half, you have such scrubs as Dong, Regu, uh, Parting is absolutely on fire these de these days. STC just won his Code A match against uh, 4GG. A little spoiler, I guess. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a lot more foreigners down there. I'm looking at Marine King, Naniwa is one of the big foreigner hopes, MC. I mean, the tournament's just absolutely stacked, so I guess the lower side's weaker, but you know what? Three of the, the, I don't know, the lower side can end up being the champion and the third place guy. Who knows, you know? Is Idra going to be able to beat Oz, in your opinion, Jeff? It's a huge mental test. I mean, let's, obviously I would be a damn fool if I told you that Idra's had a great 2012, right? That would be a silly thing to say. He's been struggling. He's going through a mental, um, he's going through the mental duress of StarCraft Two. He's got all eyes on him. He's in Korea. And for whatever reason, it's having an, kind of an adverse effect on his mental state. And he is not playing anywhere near the Idra that we were screaming for in giant MLG-packed stadiums, you know? Um, so if he can sit down with uh, Oz in the first round of this tournament and take him out, then we're going to be dealing with an Idra that could, that could be a force to reckon with. But if Idra goes in and is like, well, I got a Protoss, and then he quits without GG, you know, in 10 minutes consecutively, then I think this will be a fast and a, another road bump in, in Greg's path. You know, that's actually the worst person he could be paired against in this first round. Is uh, Well, maybe parting might be a little bit worse for Hydra, but that is, well, just being Protoss overall and just speaking to their styles and their level, like parting and Oz are two of the top four Protoss in the world right now. And it's MC. Greg is, MC would have been the worst. Uh, well, <laughs> MC is a little bit different oh, from those two, though. You know, just the... I'm not talking Greg is to more MC, used to that, MC. even though there's like a mental component, I think that, you know, especially the way that Parting plays, like, is Parting, the way he plays, man, Greg would just probably fall apart before the match, uh, but this is, I, I can't see Greg winning that, unfortunately. I want him to, but Oz is so sick right now, man. What about, uh, what about Huck, Jeff? I mean, probably going to be yeah. able to take Minigun out. Who do you Huck think beats it between, between Zaka and Doro? Is Zaka going to win that? Yeah. Zaka should win that, but I mean, Huck has, as far as this kind of tournament goes, the best draw, you, I mean, one of the best draws you could ask for him, okay? PvP is one of his stronger matchups, mm -hmm. so he's got Minigun, okay, that's round one, he should beat Minigun. Don't underestimate Minigun, Minigun's yeah. fantastic, but obviously, yeah. Huck would be the favorite we'll, there. We'll get to who he beat in the uh, open qualifier soon enough, Tyler. Let's go on, Jeff. <laughs> and then the next round is Zok Dodoro. Both those guys could come out on top there, obviously... Sock is the favorite there, but then Huck would be the favorite against either one of those guys. So then you got to talk about the lower bracket. San MVP, Sase, Rhett. you got to imagine MVP wins and probably Rhett over Sase. And then you got to pick MVP over Rhett. I mean, obviously I would love to be wrong on any foreigner versus Korean. Um, but Huck versus MVP, um, I want to say that's, like, impossible. But, but people that play against Huck, especially Korean Terrans, play dumber against Huck. So will Huck's gateway timings crush MVP? I don't know. It's happened before. I think Son's going to take out MVP, actually. Really? See, I, I yeah. said that in the bracket show, but then I got turned into the judge or some nickname. But I, I said... If, <laughs> <laughs> what? Someone, it's a good nickname they, they call me the, Because I, like, shit on Murs not beating MC, like, that's really not... 
Oh. Come on. Like, what? Yeah, no, Murs won't be MC. That would be... No. No. Come on, guys. Come on. But, um... What was I talking about? Oh, you think no, Son... Son MVP, man. I think Son will actually take out MVP. MVP Son... is, like, underwhelming lately. He's... There's something about his play that's a little bit off from what it used to be. I, maybe he's, like, won too much or something. I'm not really sure, but... I uh, Son is like hungry right now. This is a guy that like really wants to make it on not just the StarCraft scene overall, but yeah. specifically he wants to participate in foreigner tournaments. Like for instance, he left NS Hoso to look for a team, just like so many Koreans keep Wait, doing because they, they. Whose what? team is he on right now? Then no, he's on NS Hoso, man. He left and no one picked him up. He's like, ah, oh. damn, and so he rejoined and like. He's he's a frustrated high level Protoss, and I think that uh, you know, I I actually see him beating MVP there. Okay, that'd be sick. I I gotta throw to Tyler, even though he still doesn't have a web a working webcam on the show. Uh, first off, Tyler, I casted your game's first minigun. Yeah. What happened? Uh, Lost. well, it's like a a situation I think where. He he scouts a build that could either be blink or speed zealots, and he sees heavy speed zealots, and so he just assumes heavy speed zealots. But if I if I go blink, I think he has a little bit of a tough time. Not I w not saying I would insta win, but I feel like well, I hadn't encountered that kind of defense against speed zealots, so I hadn't really noticed the the way that this is a problem. But I think the reason why I hadn't encountered that yet is because everyone goes blink and so you can't just like put buildings in front of your units because they'll just die yeah. to the stalkers and so like after the first game I was like well I, I feel like I just could have gone blink there if, if I could have had good scouting and, and seen what unit composition he was going uh -huh. um, you know even if it was a little bit late you know not not the most efficient blink build but right. you know Intending to go speed zealots and then switching a blink, it, I think it would have worked pretty well. Or um, getting a warp prism because if I if I can just drop some shit off into his main, and then have blink a, at his front or just something like that to split him up a little bit, I think that would cause some problems too. But I just did none of that, so the openings for both games were just really poor for me, and it was yeah. just I think it was just a matter. of I hadn't thought out that build all the way, and I hadn't encountered anybody in practice that did what he did, and so I just uh, fell apart against him. Well, he, he played, in almost all of his PvPs we casted, he played that same very, very passive style, which was just like so reactionary to whatever their opponent was doing, that, I mean, it, it, you didn't adapt to it. Who did he end up beating after that? Some other Protoss who kind of try to do the same thing that you did, not and they didn't have, uh, I think it was a 2-0 as well. So I'm at actually very interested to see how he actually performs uh, going up against Huck, who I would assume is going to do probably similar to what you uh, would do in the first place as well, which is probably the, the very aggressive style, right? Yeah, I, I mean, that's the way Huck plays. So, yeah. I mean, after... Uh, I watch some of some of Minigun's games. I'm just, you know, he's one of the Protoss players I'm going to watch every single one of his matches. Not not because I think he's, like, the best one out there right now, just but different. because he's really good and because he does his own thing. Yeah. And because I, I think he's in the process of becoming a much bigger star, and so I want to watch the tournaments where he does that because right. that's cool to see that development. So, yeah, I'll be watching him. Like, I'm... In other words, I'm saying I, I don't think that there's a it's a fluke or he got l a lucky run or something. I think there's something right. to it. Right. Well, moving right along to the uh, the Team Liquid members in this uh, opening round one, is uh, Chef gonna be able to take out Thorzane, or are we gonna fall asleep before it actually ends? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Dude, man. Do you it's gonna be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that clan war today? Eg versus Liquid. I heard Chef did pretty well. That's one of the things I was gonna bring up here. I mean. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows how good Chef is, but, like, everyone's kind of, like, they don't know when he's going to bring it. Like, he, he hasn't yeah. really hit the scene in a major way. Everyone knows what he's capable of, but it's not like anyone's predicting him to win tournaments uh, at this point. But, uh, yeah, dude, he's he's good, and he's getting better. And but on the other hand, Thorzane is really, really good, too. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's that's... exciting the, match. 
Yeah, it's yes. going to be a match it's to a watch match, for sure. For sure. Um, the other players, Rhett going up against Sase once again. They met so much in the... Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm thinking of Sheth versus Sase, but Rhett versus Sase, is he going to be able to take him out? Yeah, I, well, Holy I don't shit, know. Holy shit, Tyler's webcam is working. Oh, it's a miracle. It's, wow. Anyway, dude, I haven't seen any of Sase. What the hell? Like, he used well, to stream so much. Yeah. And, like, I, I don't know if I've just been missing him in tournaments, but I just, I haven't happened to watch him in a while. I mean, I assume he's uh, still good. It's pretty widely known that he hates PBZ and that... Oh, really? That Sase it's ob it's ob PBZ? He's obviously, yeah. as far as our stands are concerned, very good at it, but it's definitely his weakest matchup, and he's... Yeah. Rhett has to be considered the favorite here. Rhett, Rhett's CVP yeah. is absolutely mo monstrous. Yeah, yeah, Rhett's CVP is really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, but Sase is still practicing in Korea, right? So... No, he's I mean, back in Europe, isn't he? I... Don't know. I don't think so. No, I is think he is with. Nagel. Didn't he sit like a week ago on the star tail bench? Maybe so. Pretty sure. So I mean, even though that's his weakest and that's Rhett's best, practicing Korean, practicing Europe are two totally different things. So I, I have no idea the way that's gonna go. I do. Come on. <laughs> but Rhett's smart. You're citing ladders, and that's gonna like Sase. Dude, uh, he lives with a star tail team, man. BBC, like, I understand. Like, I'm I'm talking about uh, as a guy who watched this stream who just had him play against. Uh, actually, I can't talk about that yet because it hasn't been aired. But I mean, I I've seen I've I've watched his oh. play in and around stuff and his PVZ. I like Saucy. He's one of my favorite pros. I'm not trying to talk shit. Yeah. He's just not as good as Rhett is. ZVP. It's also like, silly that you have to like state that. Like I know. Come I, on, I always community. Do, though. Come well, on. I'll show you my Twitter after if I just go Sase is not as good as Red. Dude, I did a bracket show earlier and like <laughs> said that Merz is gonna lose to MC, which shocker he's going to. Like, I'm sorry this is gonna happen. You took it too far. But I took it too far, apparently. I was I was I don't know. I'm gonna be crucified or something later today. A lot of the matches in here though are like so close to call. They really are. A lot of them, man. There's only like three or four really one sided matches. I mean, I had Don Regu winning the whole thing until I realized he was flying in on Friday morning to play the whole weekend. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the shitty. dude's a beast. The dude, we uh, we asked him to commit what to the shit? to co even if he made GSL finals. We said you have to commit, or we're gonna have to replace you. And he said, no matter what happens, win or lose, I will be coming to MLG, and I need a Friday flight. And the guy is going to fly in on Friday morning and oh, uh, compete that same oh, yeah. day. And you know, He's on my plane, actually. Dan, you know how rough that flight is. I mean, you have to cast. Oh, I mean, you don't yeah. have to play. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I'll say cast. Hard, Adam. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think casting's easy. I'm not trying to downplay that, but I mean, he has yeah. got he's got to play one of the top guys in the world. There's no fluff match, um, and he has it, to re meet MC pretty early. I mean, I originally had Dong Gu win in the whole thing. I mean, my top three picks. I think Huck getting momentum early. I think I think he's gonna win his first couple of matches. And I think he's gonna be a force to be reckoned with. I think my top three to win this whole thing is Nesty, Huck, or uh, MC. No MVP? Personally, no. I like your, I like your Huck pick. <laughs> I, think Huck's, I think Huck's gonna, if Huck can get past his first round match, I see Huck gaining a lot of confidence and momentum, and I see him mm. being very, very tough to beat. I don't, I don't know, I, my, I think PVPs are tough for him. Yeah, I, like he, uh, he loses to I, uh, foreigners here and there in PVP. Like, that was round two's that gonna be was tough. Back when he was, uh, he was, he's much better shape right now. Uh, like I know what you're citing, like losing to Titan, and it was yeah. uh, who was the other one? Uh, Feast or something. He lost to a couple foreigner Protoss, Protoss, Protoss. I know but, you guys. Yeah. I know you guys want to talk about this later, but I mean, the really scary thing for us from a logistical logistical perspective, and I'm sure it throws a wrench in, in uh, predictions, is the patch hits. I mean, oh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Sure. Adam, <laughs> I mean, but I mean, I, I mean, all of our predictions are out the window because I mean, you guys should put that caveat on it that we might look like morons because we're going to predict something, and something might hit the fan where you know somebody might win because Adam, pretend this is an MLG. We said we'd talk about that in thirty minutes, so like in an hour we'll get to that. But just give <laughs> uh, us, hey, come give on, that's an e that's an esports dig, man. That's easy. You need to play the, the Scoots clip now. Oh, I just screaming. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I'm running through the rest of the bracket. Everything else, I get it. <laughs> kind of seems to fit into place. Uh, well, hold on. How? I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this. How in the fuck did Drewby win North America? Oh. When did he get like incredible? Whoa, whoa, whoa. When did he get incredible? Whoa. whoa. 
Just Whoa. because you first to pop the question to Leah, okay? I know. Take I a know. step back. Take a step back. But what in the world? How did he beat <laughs> Sauce? not bad. Red, your problem, man. Chef. <laughs> Artosis has to go make a phone call real quick because I can't believe I just called him out. That was the surprise of all the qualifiers to me, and you guys are lying to yourselves and the community if you think it wasn't a, a surprise. Okay, he had a better run. I mean, the run that he had to go through to qualify was pretty sick, and I wouldn't have predicted that he could have got through that. But to say that he shouldn't have been in the top eight, I didn't like, say he shouldn't have been surprise. in the top eight. I said, how did he win the tournament? Okay, so you're talking about his run. Yes. Okay, that's a little more fair. Well, Kirby he played... He played pretty well, actually, but played his well opponents well played pretty poorly as well. Like, I mean, Doro was, like, screwing up games that were unlosable. Like, really, when he got that command center lift off on Metalopolis. Yeah. And then, like, for some reason, I guess to get the Observer there one second quicker, he had his Robo in the worst place you could ever put a Robo, where, like, you can kill it from low ground. If that Robo's in the middle of his base, he can't lose, you know? Uh, there's like a thousand reasons why he should have never, ever, ever, ever lost to Druby. And then, I mean, for instance, Artist against Druby. I mean, did you see a game Artist two, by just the way? didn't play well, man. Did you see game know. two of that Artosis on Shakuras? Uh, was it, who was it? Uh, Druby Doro, uh, Artist? Druby? Oh, uh, with, I, with, I think I saw it. Can't... Artist had the, uh, the sensor tower, and uh, Druby had combat shields right before, and he sent in the two medevacs like he was going to drop. Artist oh, everything yeah, yeah, back. yeah. That was really cute. That was a sick I, play, like, man. That, that, was a, that was, like, really smart by Druby there. But I did not see him winning that tournament. Is that series the one when, is that, didn't Dora try to cheese him quite a few times? Is that uh, Yeah, Dora just yeah. kept all. Dora was just, yeah, like, cheesy like, all open. They had an extended long. series, right? Yeah, in the grand final. I mean, so. it was, like, literally four of the whatever games were all, like, cheese attempts. I don't know. Basically. I don't understand as well as you guys. Well, like, the thing is, I appreciate that Drewby won it because he wasn't doing stuff like that. He was actually yeah. doing pretty solid builds, like fast expand, four axe, marine pressure. All right, now I expand. Oh, you, you did a nice build against me. I lift off. Don't give up. Do a nice, strong timing stim. And bam, you die because you don't have, like, the fundamentals of how to stay alive when you're ahead and stuff. So I'm happy for the guy, actually. It seems like he's practicing a lot, too. I think he's been practicing on the uh, Korean server from NA, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, he, he spent so some time sense. over in Korea. So, what was that, like two weeks or three weeks? Uh, like yeah, that. he was here for like two weeks or so, I think. So he be kind of like, he's, he reminds me a lot of like a slush in that at every MLG, he, has a, he either has like a really tough group where predictably yeah. he doesn't do that well, or I think, and don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure... When he got bounced out of the groups, he made it up from the open bracket like each time. Like he's he's a good player. Um, did anyone think he's an NA MLG Winter Arena uh, winning type good player? No, but look at that list of players he beat. Yeah. Whether they played bad or not, these are pretty balanced maps. This game's pretty developed. There's no like ridiculous imbalance going on right now. There's no stupid patch that just hit where Roach is a five armor now or something like that. He's he's just doing really well. So I mean, congrats yeah, to the guy. It, it was awesome win. impressive across the board there in the uh, North American qualifiers. Uh, I, I guess that's about it for talking about the bracket. But I do have to get uh, each of y'all's pick to win it. Jeff, who wins the tournament? Uh, God, I was I was actually getting all excited about going through each one and picking my winner. Well, you can post your bracket if you want. <laughs> yeah, we got shit to do. Who's going to win the whole tournament? Who wins um, the whole thing, man? I like Lenok, but he's on the same size as Nesty, really? so that's a huge test. Oh, Lenok's an absolute monster. The guy's ridiculously good. Um, if Dong Regu oh, wasn't, in, wasn't like doing the most ridiculous flight thing I've ever heard in my life, I would pick him for sure, but jet lag is real. I, like it, it actually has to be said. <laughs> Flying in the day of a tournament like that is absolutely bonkers. Just what ridiculous. What time is he getting in? He's, I mean, he's getting in in the morning, but I mean, it's a 15-hour flight straight through. You have an hour and a half from JFK to get to the, the place. I mean, you're, I mean, like I said earlier, it's, it's not just the flight and it's not just the jet lag. It's like the comfort concern. It's like my, sh my shit's still in a suitcase. I had yeah. to take it to my hotel room. I'm yeah. worried about that. I have to like come to the office to like the studio and get ready and I have to like there's just so many like little things that like that's gonna concern him and take up his mental capacity. It's just it's going to affect him. I don't care what anybody says. No. Okay. I got M C winning this thing. I okay. think he's gonna do it. Solid um, like I said, I think Dong Regu would would have been the winner if it weren't for that. Uh, he's playing 
in, in monster mode right now. I'll, I'll, also, on a side note, I think it's a little bit silly. I mean, there must be, for him to, I, I don't know how it lines up, but to travel to this and do GSL at the same time, I hope he doesn't, like, bomb out of both. I, I'm really worried about that guy, but he knows himself better than anybody else. DRG or MC? DRG. Yeah, okay. Um, MC's already out. But yeah, what I will say about everybody else is I like a few of these picks for foreigners to win. I do this every time. But Nanny was <laughs> obviously kind of a bit of a monster. Um, Absolutely. A couple of these. Let's look here. Uh, what about Drew Violet, B. man? Can Violet do it? Violet's got a great shot. Violet's been playing absolutely on fire. Um, what was the other one here? And then, well, I, that's, that's like the only initial rounds. But I hope a couple of foreigners really turn it on. I, I don't want this to be like a top four or eight Korean yeah. thing. I mean, there's, I'd, really, I'd really like it if there's some foreigners speckling up there. I think in the first, there's six Koreans that meet in round one, and there's a potential for 11 Koreans to win top 16, which means they will be the top 16 of Columbus. So I hope it's not that stacked, but we'll see. We'll see. Me too. Tyler, who wins? I'm sticking with Dong Raigu, man. I'm not going <laughs> to doubt. I have faith. <laughs> Here, I, here's my experience with jet lag. Sometimes it's horrible, but it's not horrible every time. There is a chance Dong Rai Gu sits down at his computer, and he's 95% there. And I think a 95% there, Dong Rai Gu, will win this tournament. At least I'm gonna. That's who I'm gonna be rooting for. He's okay. he's a good pick, man. Because right now, the, the thing is, the hardest round for him will probably be that first round where he's tired and he's playing a really good Terran, but he's preparing only for Gumiho right now. So. Yeah, that's like very lucky on his part. Like, if he had to play a like Oz or something that first round, he's out. I think because he's only playing ZBTs for GSL right now. But well, he, he so he's got Gonzi. He's got a Gonzi first round there. Yeah, so yeah he's he's, he's sick good, but Gonzi is not that different from Gumiho. So, yeah. but you I mean, know, it's like it kind of lines up for him. But look it's at lucky. his. But look at his round two. Those round two is brutal. Oh, I know. It's it's, it's insane. <laughs> I actually think the tournament's going to be decided in round two because I think it's going to be out of the four players, Nesty, Oz, and Parting DRG, I'm almost certain one of those guys is going to take this tournament. I think they're the four players that are really going to just dominate the whole day. JP, uh, question, how come weekend. Artosis gets to pick four winners? Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm narrowing it down. You this might up. be the Artosis I'm a rule. showman. <laughs> so, so I think it's going to be rule. in that round two, it's going to be Nesty, Oz, and DRG Parting, of course. And, I mean... Who is actually the best player out of those? It's like really hard to say. I think they all have their matchups that they're better at. Uh, like I feel like Parting might beat Oz. Uh, Nest T might be Parting. Parting might actually beat DRG, even though DRG three would him the other day. Uh, it was it was not like it was like silly how he lost some of those games. I don't know. It's it's really 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 hard. But I, I winner of Nest T Oz is who I pick to ch take it, and that's. It might be Nest T, but it might be Oz. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'll tell you after round one. All right. Well, moving right along, Jeff. Mm. Did you want to give your prediction? I, I have a prediction. Who I mean, what's your prediction? I think you can't look past the people that have actually won it um, from an MLG event and it, that, the difference in skill set that it takes to win an MLG versus a GSL. I think the preparation that you get to, the luxury you have of preparation at a GSL is not prevalent, is not available at an MLG. Um, it's definitely a test of like uh, crisis management and you know just endurance. And I, I think Nest is going to make a very big wave in the bracket, but I don't see him winning it. I have MC winning it. I have MC going through and winning it. I think Huck's going to be there at the end. Uh, but I think MC is going to win the whole thing. I think the the jet lag is going to be too much on DRG, and I think the fatigue for playing that many good players early is going to affect him. He's going to play parting in round two, potentially. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I mean, that's just like, I mean, that's going to be a lot of weight on him. I mean, you can't, mental fatigue, you can't discount that. I mean, I get MC. MC's done it in the past. Yeah. He's been in the finals at the National Championship. He's won an event, or I don't think, is he won one? He has a 1-1. Yeah. One, one, MC's he's, never won an He's been MLG in the finals right. twice. Yeah. Um, I got MC winning it. Right. You know, actually, now that you say that, uh, that's kind of interesting how, yeah, you can't really prepare for a match. <laughs> and uh, I think that works out really well for Oz because I feel like overall he's one of the most solid and best broad Oz's in the world. But sometimes you see him get really deep in GSL and he starts trying to get too fancy and too metagamey and stuff. And it, you just think to yourself, wow, if you would just play your standard normal play, you'd be crushing these nerds. And 
So that might that might help him out actually if he doesn't have like complete game plans against everyone because I think he screws it up with that a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, Jeff, you know, me and you actually had the privilege of sitting in on the conference call today or earlier this week when Blizzard decided to throw in a patch on the biggest tournament weekend of 2012. Do you want to relive that moment for everyone listening? Oh, yeah, I can see it just like it was yesterday. I mean, uh, I think one of the parts that really blew me away the most, and, I mean, there's no other way to do this than to just kind of let Dustin Browder take over my body and just relive it. So, I mean, he's sitting like he normally does. Uh, most of his belly is exposed. I don't want to actually do that just yet. And he's kind of lounging there. And he goes, gentlemen, as we know, we got the patch. We got a launch here. You know, no particular date. There's actually no urgency for it. So I was kind of thinking, what would be the stupidest fucking date that I could possibly launch uh, a balance patch? And I was thinking back. Okay, I mean, we haven't done this in a while. One of my favorite balance patches I've done was right before an MLG event. Uh, this kid, Greg Files, uh, went on to go ahead and actually win the tournament because I fucked up real good. I mean, it was it was pretty fantastic. So I think uh, I present to you, okay? Got a tournament coming up this weekend. Actually, we got two tournaments coming up, which is exactly why I'm picking this date. We could actually screw over two different tournaments. GSL um, semifinals counts as three. So three tournaments. GSL semifinals? Why not? Let's throw it in there. Thank you for that, Rob Simpson. So uh, <laughs> what I've done is I've, I've put a graph up behind me about how upset we can make everyone in the StarCraft II community. And as you can see, there's just one giant fucking bar going right up to the top there. We're going to piss them off pretty good. So I say we launch it right before the tournament starts. And when they actually start yelling at us about why we did it, we don't actually even have to fucking answer. <laughs> and they just laugh for like 10 minutes. But that was actually the whole call. Yeah, that was the whole call. We were both on it. As, I mean, we talked to Blizzard. It's no secret that MLG, uh, every now and then talks with Blizzard. What, did they talk to you guys about this? Did we know this was coming? We didn't know it was coming. Um... I don't think the esports team has much control on when the patches come. Uh, it's obviously uh, unfortunate, and it's we and we asked them if they can move it. They they can't. I mean, there's just yeah. a production schedule on their side. It sucks, but I mean, us and the players are going to deal with it, and uh, hope for the best. You know what's funny too? Here, let me uh, let me fix the issue for you guys. Okay, so this watch is MLG ASUS GSL weekend. Okay, this is the front of it. This is time coming into the watch. This is time after the watch. <laughs> if you were to do the patch that's here, that's like okay-ish. Here, yeah. Here, now it's getting kind of bad. Here, it's really bad. You fucked up. Okay, that's my example. Now look, totally okay. Totally okay. <laughs> totally okay. Totally okay. Totally okay. So it's a weird like, after the watch, it's all okay. Away from the watch, it's okay, but it gets bad. It gets bad, and then there's right here. This little, this little spot right fucking here, that's when they're actually, that's when they're doing it. They're doing it in the one time. <laughs> look how small that, time. look how small that watch looks in Jeff's gorilla hand. <laughs> I actually had to add links to it so it can go around my wrist. <laughs> that's how it fits, so now it's actually kind of too big. Um... <laughs> Artosis. I like we have to talk about this because yeah. there's some guy somewhere who's gonna tweet at Dustin Browder. Hey, Dustin Browder, they're talking shit on State of the Game, and he'll be like, "Well, that's that's a goddamn that's a wrong," and he'll like watch it and be like, "That makes total sense." Like, there's no there's no secret Blizzard fucking calendar that that says that Friday they have to do it, right? What happens in Blizzard World on that Friday that that's that's the day they have to do it? I know we don't have answers. I'm posing them because I want people to be as upset as I am inside. If I could have a heart attack right now for dramatic effect, <laughs> I would do it. I would instigate that heart attack. You would instigate it, guys. Dan, what does this, what does this mean for the tournament? You weren't here for the patch notes, and Tyler, you as well, uh, when we discussed them last episode. But what uh, can we expect? But when this? you last discussed them, yeah. they were proposed patch notes that yeah. I was hoping wouldn't right. come through. Exactly. So I think in this episode we need to have a, a segment where we bitch about the fact that all this should actually happen. 
Well, Tyler, you started it. Let's can I do it. it right now? Let's go ahead. First of all, how can you put APM into the game and then add this like EAPM thing, which is just a straight copy off what the original guy did just in his spare time, and then fuck that up. And this whole time, you don't even know what per minute means. Like, they've changed it again, and it's still not per minute. Actions per minute? Not Blizzard minute. <laughs> I want to know how many times somebody hits a key in a minute. Like, big numbers are cool. Like, it was cool when people had 300 APM. Now people have, like, 80 APM. <laughs> but they don't actually have 80 APM. Blizzard's just... <laughs> it's Blizzard it's like, minutes. You know what it is? Cause, and this, I'll tie this in. Because what pro said that the, this Phoenix change was going to fix mutas? I don't... I mean, there was some discussion, but I think the vast majority of people were like, this isn't really the best solution possible. But I think Blizzard is, they're going to go to the numbers and they're going to say, hey, we got some people in, in Blizzard who have 80 APM. And what's your APM? We're like, oh, it's, it's 80 according to your shit. And they're like, all right, we're kind of on the same plane. <laughs> here. We're just going to trust our instincts. We don't care what the pros think. So, dude, the Phoenix, so, I think it's terrible. How is it terrible? Is it too good or too weak it's, or what? It's terrible for their... The reason that they gave for it was that it, it's supposed to deal with mutas because this is what's the worst, the biggest disadvantage to going Phoenixes against mutas is that it's too big of an investment that eventually turns into no benefit at all against infestors or against just not mutalisks. So, like, the more money you spend on Phoenixes to deal with mutalisks, like, the more fucked you are. The only way you can go Phoenix. <laughs> And deal with Mutalisk in a good way is to, like, hit a sweet spot where you build the perfect number of Phoenix and it, you know, it helps deal with the Mutas just the right amount. And then you're transitioning into Stalkers and Storm and stuff like that. Stuff that can actually work when the Zerg loses their Mutas and builds some other army, not Phoenixes. So to make a change that says you need to invest even more into Phoenixes, and for that bigger investment, you're going to get two range, which does absolutely nothing to help the problem of your Phoenixes being useless against anything other than Mutas. Just seems ridiculous to me. Like, why would I do that? Why would I ever do that? So, I, I, I don't get that. I actually have to go ahead and do something I never do, which is disagree with you. I never do this. I'm, I'm so excited. sorry. I can't be right all the time. Uh, yeah. But I could not disagree more because if you look at some of the most powerful builds coming out right now, for instance, what Genius has been doing to crush people on Belshire Beach, is he opens with Void Ray, uh, gets those five Phoenixes with the Void Ray to harass, takes his third base while teching to Colossus. And the main problem with dealing with Mutas with the Phoenixes is how micro-intensive they are. It's actually insane. Like, you literally can't look at... Because if the mutas are counterattacking you, you have to use your phoenixes on that while you counterattack them with your main army, for the most part, uh, once you get a Colossus or two out. And you literally can't look at your main army, even for a second, because then the phoenixes all die, because that is how close the range is. But with that six range, I feel like it is going to be easy. You're going to keep all those phoenixes alive. The thing is, phoenixes shoot quick, so even... If you open with a build that's a starport build, and you get those five phoenixes, and then you see a spire, and you just chrono out phoenixes from one stargate, and you get up to like ten with six range, and you are just kiting constantly because you're quicker than the mutas, those fuckers are going down, man. They are gone. Uh, and Isn't especially if you get the plus one. Isn't that like, no, too severe, you well, think, though? I do think it's too severe. I think the plus two range is too severe. I think that's insane. I think that mutas, if you have a Stargate opening, mutas are no longer an option. In fact, even making corruptors with the mutas doesn't really help against phoenixes because corruptors are so slow that you actually fly out of the range of them and then just shoot the mutas from a different angle. It's actually, but the thing is, it, that's like the trade-off is that phoenixes are so ridiculously microintensive. In fact, too much so to make it like a completely standard thing right now, I feel like. But with the six, I, I'm going to be able to do it with one hand, you know? And that's... I don't know. I feel like that is going to be insane against mutas. Here, here's what I feel like it's done, though, because... Okay, let's say... Okay, in that situation, if you're dealing with a Zerg that is going mass, mass muta, and what they're basically doing is saying, you can't move out, because if you do, I'll kill your base. You're saying, 
you can move out if you can get this little contention of phoenixes that can endlessly hit mutos without being hit back. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, losing, it's a losing move for the zerg. Okay, so that move can no longer be done by zergs against... Uh, you know, it can no longer be done by zergs against protosses that are going for six range. Yeah. But I feel like this just turns that whole situation into more of a coin flip thing that is a matter of who's getting what scouting. Because the Zerg scouts the fleet beacon, which he certainly should be able to scout it. And he should no longer build a single Muta from there. Well, and he's not in a losing position because of that. And if you it, continue to build Phoenixes blindly, and that, like, I don't know, it's, it's just this, it's a coin flip situation because if you're not getting full information, then someone's going to go for something that's going to work and someone's going to go for something that's going to get shit on. Well, I think you have to assume that there could be a fleet beacon because if you're not going to go mutas, then obviously you're going to tech up to Hive, in which case they want to have Mothership anyways. So that fleet beacon actually should just be there if they have a Stargate. So I think you have to already assume that. And yeah, I think that this is going to turn into a situation like that where when they see that you open with the Stargate, because you can't go Stargate after they went mutas, man. That's just stupid. Like, you are never going to do anything. But yeah. if you already have the Stargate, they just kind of can't go mutas, it seems like. You know, they could go, like, Corruptors if they really want. So we uh, agree it's bad. You're just disagreeing on the reasons for why it's bad, yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's bad because it's too good, not because it's too bad. I just want to limelight one point well, Tyler made, which, which is really important to me. And, and that's, like, actually, as we're talking about this, I kind of got tweeted this notion. Someone... I can't tell if they're joking or not because their name is Cockhorse, but said obviously you don't understand your myopic perspective can't comprehend everyone has jobs it caters to casuals they matter and I think he was talking about something else but that perspective gets cross applied to the concept we're talking about now where this this buff goes in and it's less micro intensive Protoss and it's a severe hard counter so at like the platinum level I'm like wow mutas are effing hard. And then they give you this upgrade, and you're like, thanks, Blizzard, now mutas die. And that's great for them, but for us, it makes the game a little bit dumber. Because Dan's point, essentially, if I could speak for you, Dan, is that if you open Stargate, the Zerg in the metagame basically understands now that they can't go mutas with that upgrade. They just can't that's go mutas. That's what I say. And what Tyler's saying, and I agree with, too, and we all agree with, is it's too much. I mean, to a certain extent, Tyler's point goes on to say that, like, if you invest a lot in Phoenix, it's actually, like, goading the Protoss into this tech path that later will be fairly useless. Yeah. I don't entirely agree with that. I think Phoenix still do have some point, but but not like in the in the range if you have like twenty of them. Um, but the bottom line is like as an answer to Mutalis, I think buffing uh, Phoenix in this way makes the game worse. It makes it less micro intensive. It makes it too severe, and it's also balancing it in the wrong direction. I think like Phoenix should not be the shut the fuck up counter to Mutalis. Like you made ca you made Mutalis, you done goofed. I made Phoenix. Get out of the game. Like that's. That's, I don't like those kind of hard counters in, in my StarCraft. Yeah, because, you know, now I feel like with that upgrade available, if I'm right on the way I'm thinking about it, which through the games that I play, it seems like that's going to be the case, uh, it's going to... People will stop going mutas. So if I make five Phoenixes early to harass, which is, you know, it's a fine strategy. If I've gone Forge Fast Expansion, I can afford that and I'm not going to die to anything. Uh... I have suddenly shut down an entire tech tree. They cannot go mutas, and now what does that leave them with? I'm like, well, looks like you're going infestors, buddy, and then I just go ahead and counter infestors. And it's like, well, there you go. For five phoenixes, that's ten supply. Look how, how comfortable I am now. Yep. I, I still feel like this is a losing path for Protoss because, well, it's going to depend on map, but I feel like on a map, for example, where it's relatively difficult to hold a third. If the Zerg can defend the if the Zerg can hold three bases against the you know the one Void Ray five Phoenix opening thing, which normally they should be able to, even yeah. if it's a oh, far third, then they should be able to hold it anyway. But then the Protoss is going to have a more difficult time advancing out to their third when they need to, if the Zerg chooses to power off their three bases and do kind of like a, you know, you're staying on two base Protoss. And like I feel like if you're if you're actually if if the Zerg goes ahead and makes eight mutas, and the Protoss if they're actually going to be able to prepare for a mass muta, they're going to have to be going for this range upgrade off two base, 
which doesn't really make any sense. Like, the gas-wise, you can't be investing in anything else significant at that point. You can't be getting Colossa yet. You can't be getting that many upgrades or, you know, a contention of Blink Stalkers or anything like that. Like, you're really kind of stuck, and you're on two base against a three base Zerg. So just by making, like, eight Mutas and then going for, like, a, a Ling Roach thing, I think that's, like, sick powerful. Well, like the way as it is right now, and the the upgrade doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a dead end, actually. It's like a trap for the protops. I don't know if well, I get the, the upgrade off of eight meters, though. You know. Well, the thing is, well, yeah. But if you wait, <laughs> then that's the problem. Like, if well, you I'd wait, have to it takes wait a, a certain amount. But uh, <laughs> the way Genius gets around this, which is quite genius, I have to say, oh. is he takes a really quick third with this. He spent. He gets his geysers really early. Has plenty of sentries. He takes a very fast third. And then you're forced in this gross situation where he's harassing you lightly with Phoenix Voidray taking a third, teching to Colossus with just random assemblage of gateway units, plus one, and sentries. And he has a Voidray, of course, so you can't attack with pure Roachling, right? Because the force fields are going to lock you out and put a clock on those roaches. And if you try to go up to Hydras, I mean, that's quite a commitment, you know? So... I don't feel like you're trapped at all with this, actually. You know, you can always do things like build, uh, you know, more cannons if you need. Uh, it, it, I would suggest watching uh, the Belshire Beach games against BRG and Nestie from this GSL season uh, that Genius played. Because the way he uses Phoenix is it, like, opened my eyes. I didn't even like Phoenixes before I saw those games. And that was, like, this groundbreaking, amazing way that he's controlling the map. He's putting on pressure. If you have mutas, if you're actually committing mutas, he will know because... He starts attacking at one or two Colossi, like moving across the map. He's building a ton of cannons because he spends so much gas that he can do that. And with just a few force fields and like one bad engagement from Zerg and suddenly he picks up five roaches. And then you're down five roaches even though you try to run. You should have been down one because a force field got it. But now you're down six. And the numbers like sway really quickly towards genius in that type of way. So Dan... Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to go on with this forever. So. Hey, Dan. You're like, shut up. Hi, what's up? I agree, yeah. Hey, Dan. Yeah? How does this affect your predictions at all? Oh, the patch thing? Yeah. Well, I, th that's, uh, I mean, I don't see, um, like, Thorzane or MVP winning it now because I think the biggest thing is the ghost. Really? Not being able to just completely uh, yeah. eat through broods and ultras, and that's <laughs> specifically MVP and Thorzane love mass ghost late games against Zerg, so that's going to screw up their entire style. I want to ask you guys a question, Jeff. We talked about this last episode. Adam's probably going to fire me for asking this, but we didn't ban the mouse, the mouse will trick. No tournaments have banned that yet. Is this going to come into play this tournament? No, I don't uh, think so. I was watching Destiny's stream. I'm pretty sure it's absolutely a third-party program only thing. It's only a driver thing, but it's still not banned. He, he had to use a third-party program. So it uses the the mouse drivers, yeah. Um, I don't know well, how to keep repeating what I was gonna say, but like it's it's you have to download another program, not just the drivers. That's what he. I, that's what I understood oh. he did do. Like, okay. I think my mouse it, drivers would allow that actually. For like, I use a uh, some new Logitech mouse, and I think the drivers I could actually set that up in. Is pretty that, sure. Is that a big deal? Because a lot of players were bitching about that. I, I just want to know from a, a player's perspective why. I think. I mean, I understand why, but in here's the thing. Here's the thing that makes that risky for you guys. Sure. Um, nobody going into it says, I have to have my mouse scroll thing. I, that's what I do. That's how I play. It's the only way I know how to play it. There's nobody that says that. Right. But there are going to be people who, if that gets used against them, they will say, that's bullshit. I don't have any way to do that. I'm not using it. Right. It's something he knew about because he read the mm. forums, and now he's fucking me up. Yeah. So you're going to have the guy who's legitimately mad if you don't ban it but you won't have the guy who's legitimately mad if you do ban it. So for MLG Whoa. to not do that, you are inviting drama. It's true. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll just leave it. Ty Tyler or Dan, do you guys have any thoughts on that? No, you, you weren't he's here right. last episode. It, it invites the drama if that occurs. Uh, I, don't, I mean, well, the biggest part of it, I would say, would be the ghost sniping by far. And that's going to fall way down because of this nerf anyways, so. We're going to see more Vikings in the late game, I guess. I don't know. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
All right, well, let's, uh, are we good with the patch? I know Tyler and uh, Dan, you guys weren't here last week when we talked about, did you guys want to touch on anything else? I think, I think we kind of beat that horse yeah. to death, man. Yeah, I think we, I yeah. Think we had a good... We, we killed the horse. So yeah, screw over Terran players. I just want to, again, limelight that point. Like, I feel really bad for the Terran players going this tournament because um, the snipe ratio that they got uh, against massive units, specifically Broodlords, and Ultras, I guess. But I, I didn't think snipe should work against Ultras to begin with. That was a little bit silly. But yeah. against Broodlords, this was one of their only answers, in my opinion. You have, like, the Viking and the Ghost. Uh -huh. And maybe the Ghost was a little bit too good, but it certainly didn't deserve the the nerf that it got against Broodlords. Does it change anybody's predictions from earlier? I predicted, I predicted Protoss to win, so no. I think everyone predicted you know, the toss. I, I wonder if uh, the snipe thing will actually be okay against Hive Tech still, because uh, it seems like when this happened, like you would kill all the Broodlords, and then they'd make a round of Ultras and send them, and then they'd kill those too. It's just they yeah. can't kill the Broodlord The Ultras now, maybe, you know? Like, they can still snipe stuff to death, maybe? I don't know, I haven't <laughs> tried it. We'll see. Yeah. It could be one of those things where, in theory, we're all making it worse than it is, but then in practice, yeah, it's really fine. that happens yeah. a lot. Because that has happened an absolute well, lot. So. If there's anything that the patch did, it did introduce the fact that Larva is now in the units, which is awesome from a spectator oh, point sick. of view. That's the best that's, point. Well, I can't wait, man. Every commentator in the world is going to dwell on that. It is. Every oh single... My and God. actually, my brain is going to melt. My brain is going to melt from it, because everyone's just going to point it out. Yeah. He has so <laughs> many... Of the larva that you can see that when watch this, there it is. The larva are getting used. They're being used. Do you see this? He still has 240 larva. Jeff sounds like a radio broadcaster from like the 50s or something. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on. So we've got uh, two more tournaments to talk about. We got assembly coming up this weekend, and. Uh, um, should we just start with the groups on this, or should we talk about that MLG is just fucking over Assembly completely, Adam? Uh, well, <laughs> Assembly still looks good, man. It does. This no, is the, good, the, the, I will watch this awesome. when I get home, for sure. My plea is just that, uh, to the best of the tournament's abilities, that they always talk, but there's always going to be... Con like, yeah. this thing will happen. It's just... MLG gets like th two mulligans on this, as far as I'm concerned. If, if all four of your tournaments fuck another tournament over, Adam, I'm going to punch you in your six-pack abs, right in the abs. <laughs> and it's not going to hurt, because you work out, but it's gonna, like, the thought will be there. You know what I mean? Tyler is just like shocked by the fact <laughs> you're going to punch someone about this. Let's <laughs> mess up, Jeff. We, uh, we, we, for all of our Pro Circuit dates and all of our arena dates, everything that's published right now, we, we've, I, I feel like we've avoided everything. Um, this one, obviously, we, we had internally pe pegged as our date, and uh, we dropped the ball. And uh, it won't happen again. And if you can't take responsibility for everything, Adam. Son of a bitch. I, you know, we talked, we talked to Carmack from IEM. We talked to, uh, you know, the guys from IPL. Um, we talked to the guys from NASL. Um, this is one of those ones that fell off our radar, and it's, uh, it's unfortunate. And uh, they, I, I love Apollo. I love... Uh, you know, Mr. Bitter, he's worked for us in uh, Total Biscuit. Yeah. And Total Biscuit's never worked for us. I know Sunday loves him. I've never actually spoken to him. And uh, Jeff, what I you hope these guys do amazing. I, I, he, said, uh, he said Apollo, and I thought he was trying to say Total Biscuit. That's no. the other guy commentating there. Apollo's like, done our North American call or our European North American qualifiers. Uh, uh, Caldor's actually done some of our qualifiers. Ben Ben Nickel, Mr. Bitter's actually been to some uh, to our Anaheim event and done some of our online qualifiers. Uh, these guys are all great. I don't wish ill upon this event. I wish. I hope they do amazing. I hope it leads into our event. We don't overlap schedule-wise uh, at all. And uh, I hope that the event goes off flawlessly. And I don't wish them to do poorly so that we do well. It's uh, that's a misconception out there. And it's hopefully we do better in the future. It's all on me. It's, it's all it's, on me scheduling. Oh God. <laughs> It's sad, but I'm actually kind of excited because if you look at the draws for both tournaments, like Asus yeah. has put together a fantastic tournament. Oh, this Selfishly, is as an EG guy, we got our two Koreans over there. Yeah, I'm thrilled. I think they both have good groups. I'm kind of excited about it. That tournament's uh, awesome. Yeah, the, the players are incredible in both tournaments. Let, let's run through the group stage here of Assembly, and we'll just pick the two players to move on. So Group A, Pumakas, Titan, Wilmu, Pumakas, all agreed. Yeah, uh, I think Bumu's the clear least favorite, but Titan's freaking Titan good, man. Titan might do it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Titan might come out of there, man. Does he beat Puma or does he beat Koss there? Uh, probably Koss, because Puma 
you know, he Puma just never fails, you know. Cost sometimes does. Puma doesn't feel the the pressure and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Group B: Stefano, Mana, Happy, Night End, Stefano, and who? Mana. Mana. <laughs> Mana with ease. That's one of the tougher groups, man. Don't count Night End out. He's really freaking. Yeah, Night End's really good. Plus he he awesome constantly board. gets Stefano, I feel like. So it's kind of he's kind of like the unsung hero because he has like a one-two series with Stefano a lot of the time. But um, it's Stefano, Night End, and Mana, and who? Happy. 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 Don't thing. count Happy out either. Like this is, in my opinion, one of the most competitive groups. Definitely. Um, Stefano is obviously the clear favorite, but I would not be shocked if he took second in that group or even got bounced out just because of how good those guys are. I think Group B and Group G are the hardest. I got Stefano and Mona coming out of this one. Mm, group C, Moon, Real, Braddock, and Cloud. Uh, that one's kind of hard too, man. I, I, Real I know Real's Moon. been doing well, man, but he's like the risk pro toss. If anyone actually watches all of his VODs from tournaments, they should be able to beat him. This guy is solvable. So I'm going with Moon, absolutely. And, uh, Who's the other one? I, you know, Braddock played Terran in StarCraft 1. Whoever goes mech out of Braddock and Cloud when they play each other. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you, you, like, always <laughs> represent your opinions a on everything. <laughs> That's it, man. It's because I'm right. <laughs> Tyler, you've been silent. Who takes it, Group C? <laughs> uh, you know, when we have such an expert as Artosis on the show, <laughs> I don't even feel like I should say. I'm Whoever just goes defer. back. All right, here's the easy one. Then. <laughs> as we move on. Whomever goes back. As we move on to Group D, Tyler, who takes it? Hero select Sepulchre. What if they go bo both go mech? Then Moon doesn't make out of the group, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dan, you have a responsibility. There's people that don't know you're joking right now. You realize that? Like, they're lost, man. I. All right, what's group D? Group select Cyclops is... Holy shit, Artosis has the bracket. Just one at a time, Dude. boys, please. One at a yeah, time. Yeah, one at a time. So here's... I'm going to pose a question to Tyler select. and Jeff about this group. Uh, with Who is the, the group? New queen, yeah, who is the group? The, the, uh, hero select Cyclo and Sizz. So okay. with the new queen mechanic of inject larva, in this group play, how many Zerglings will Sizz make? <laughs> <laughs> you know like there's a new mechanic where like Protoss buildings like easily block Zerglings. That's true. So that doesn't change that doesn't change my <laughs> question at all though. The <laughs> yeah, queen mechanic probably... man, larva inject. Correct. How larva many inject. Zerglings will Sis make it's through really the course of this? It's really tempting. He's gonna get a lot of larva. And he's going to be able to make Zerglings, so... Yeah. I the caster's going to be able to see exactly how many larvae he has, guys. Yeah. Um, I mean... Uh, well, this group is let's... Select Hero win it easily, by the way, in case we were wondering. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know why there's... So, Cyclo has decisive PvP, though. I mean, he could make you it. You know what's the only drama? You know what's the only drama? Select will actually take first. Is that because you said that Select's going to take first, yeah. or what? I just think Select's TVP, like, I don't know, I, I've been watching, uh, like, I watch all the Korean Protosses, they hit Select on a pretty regular basis. Select is in absolute monster mode, man. He, uh, he was training the FXO Korean house, and his TVP, in my opinion, stands out far and away more than his other two matchups, which are still phenomenal, but he, he terrifies me, man. <laughs> and Terran did not get nerfed in the TVP matchup with that Ghost thing, like, it's still two snipe on Templar, and you don't snipe anything else, and EMP is the same. So I, I think I think Select takes that group over Hero. Tyler, I think Hero takes it. <laughs> okay. Hero's, Hero's like <laughs> my favorite player, by the way. So it's not even me being like some weird hater on. Oh Hero. yeah, Hero's I mean just... Select's TVP has always been insane, and he's definitely been keeping it up, as far as I've heard. So. All right, well, let's move on. Group E, Jeff. We'll just throw this to you. JYP, White Ross, Satini, Die Star. JYP and who, Jeff? Because I know you're going with him, but who else? It's hard. Satini is a fantastic Terran. Straylock is in there, right? Am I making that up? Uh, no, you're making that up. Diestar and White Raw. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so Diestar's... Um, I don't know. I keep hearing like, weird things about him. He's either like really good or everyone thinks he's really bad. Um, the few times I've played him, it wasn't 
much of a challenge, but that was a while ago. Um, I don't think he'll take anywhere in the top of that group. I think it'll be JYP and White Raw, but I would not be surprised if either JYP or White Raw's name were replaced with Satini. Um, I say that, and I'll say this too, I don't know how much Satini's been training. He's one of those players that's a little bit off the radar for me, and uh, I actually have a pretty good pulse on the European players, whether people believe that or not. But for me, uh, I never hear about Satini. I never see him playing that much, so I don't know. Dan or, or Tyler, you guys want to throw in on this? JYP and White Raw. Yeah. And it's like the easy prediction there. All right. Well, if I don't mention how Tasia got into this tournament, the Diamondites are going to be out in full effect. So he won the ESV Weekly or something like that. <laughs> he won some ESV thing. I was trying to figure out what you were saying. To get into this tournament, he's a good player. Congratulations to Tasia. He'll probably make it out of this group. Who's going to be the other player to make it out of this group? What's the group? Oh, yeah. Tasia, Elfie, Adele, Scott, Jinro. Sorry, I forgot about that. I was so excited to say Diamond Eyes. I had been, like, working on that all night. Tasia's a clear favorite. Then it's kind of a battle for second. And uh, I think all, all three of those names. Who was again? Adele, Scott, Elfie. Or Elfie. I think it's Elfie, obviously. And Jinro. Elfie just did an interview where he said he's working pretty hard. I thought I read that. I could be wrong. Um... And then I, I really think Adele Scott's underrated. He's actually a really good pro DOS. Mm -hmm. And then Tyler, you got to tell me about Jinro because I, I don't know. I, I try to watch the stream every once in a while, but that, I don't see too much. He's been yeah. a very quiet player, I, I feel like. He's been quiet, but then I, I don't know. There's like a common misconception that he's just kind of fizzled out since, you know, his obviously awesome semifinal GSL achievements. But, like, he's been solid. He's been He's still been working hard. And he's been beating some pretty good people and little things here and there. So I hope this can be a tournament where he kind of reasserts himself. So I, I, I would say he's definitely in contention. Uh, I remember Elfie being a really good player, and if he's working hard, then I would kind of lean between Elfie and Jinro. But, uh, yeah, I, I think Jinro is going to turn some heads in this group. All right. Ty or Artosis, your thoughts? Uh, I would say definitely Elfie and Tasia. Well, I mean, it, Jinro could get in. I don't see Adel Scott coming out of that group at all. Really? Yeah, I just uh, I don't see it. I feel like all three of those players have proven themselves several times to be a better player than Adel Scott. Both in tournament standings and just watching their play. So I would say Tasia, 100% out of that group. Elfie, probably. Sorry, discussing stuff with that. I'm off mic. Anyways, Group G, <laughs> Lucky Strelak, Bly, Bishu. Uh, who takes that? What? Lucky. Know. Lucky, lucky Bishu. who else? Yeah, lucky. lucky crushes that group. And then maybe Strelak? I don't know. The other, the, the second one's kind of hard to call. Yeah, the second one is hard to call. But I would say Strelak. I mean, Strelak always does well, no matter where he is. Jeff, Tyler, you guys looking? It's deep Lucky on. and who? Lucky, Lucky Straylock, Bly and Bishu. Oh, Bly is really good, man. I don't hear anything about Bishu. Like Bishu, sometimes does really well um, in team leagues and stuff. But then I don't know if he's training after that, and then he kind of is quiet for a long time. But Bly is actually freaking good, man. Um, I would not be shocked if Straylock did not end up in the top two there. Well, let's move on. Group H. Holt moves on. Who's the other player? Phoenix, Bling, or TLO? Yeah. I don't think it's quite that cut and dry. I really? mean, Holt obviously is a, a, a favorite in it. Phoenix has been can, playing well lately, somehow. And Bling, Bling has been upset? playing really well, and TLO has TLO actually has, been well. yeah. TLO actually so, beasted it in the, the team league recently, so that's true. Yeah. 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 I, I, they've oh, all been shit. playing really well, man. Uh, I You know, Bling is pretty solid. I, I actually don't know who's going to get out of here, but I mean, anything could happen because Phoenix cheeses a lot, so who knows, you know? <laughs> is that Phoenix Wera, or is that used to be Phoenix Wera? Is that who that is? I believe so, yeah. Okay. I think Group B, G, and H are the hardest groups, in my personal opinion. Obviously not as well versed as you guys. And Obviously. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I get it, Jeff. Uh, yeah, B and H are pretty crazy. Those are hard to predict right there, B and I, H. I feel like Pult is the... Pult and TLO I got. 
I'd be pretty proud of. Uh, I could do. Uh, I could do any two out of that group. Uh, I think Taylor is the unfavorite of it, unfortunately. He's he's riding that momentum though, man. He, he got is, what three yeah. or four kills and he wants to shave his beard, man. He wants to get that shit off. Maybe um, he doesn't. Hear I him. want him to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then of course we got to run in. Who takes it, Jeff? Who takes the tournament? Uh, Puma. Who takes it, Tyler? Hmm. Lucky. Oh shit. Ooh. Artosis. Who takes it? There is. There is my man right there. All right. I, I was like, he's gonna say hero, and I'm gonna have to sit here and go, yeah, guys, they're <laughs> on your teams. I know. Oh my god, shoot me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, I'm looking at this. All right. Uh, I think that. Even though whenever we see Moon play, it looks like he's not very good. Are you going to say think Moon? You're gonna I say think he has a good chance for it. Fuck? This guy is sick on land. Money, look. And I'm, listen, I'm hearing rumors about Moon in practice being pretty insane. But he does play on the Korean server. I did hear that. All right. Yeah, yeah. he does. Hold on. As do, did you know what it. game he used to play, though, before StarCraft 2? Oh, shit. Was it WarCraft 3? Yeah. Can I take back my, can I take back my guess? You well, can um, take it back. not European, right, Dan? Uh, look. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Jeff. I'm gonna have to interrupt you and Dan. That's USA fine. is gonna win this tournament. Stefano's taking it. Yeah, He's obviously. Win the whole thing. Stefano For America. Not that anyone cares. I got Mono winning it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I I don't know. I'm gonna go with Lucky as well. I think Lucky's a really good choice. But Moon and Tasia could do it too. Stefano wins. USA represent. Let's move on. Why would, why would Stefano winning be USA representing? He's from the U.S., <laughs> man. No, he's not. He's French. Anyone that's not Korean is from USA, man. Oh. <laughs> uh. Look at this guy not knowing that Stefano's from frickin' America, dude. He's <laughs> born and raised in Montana. My God, French. That's right next to where Adam's from, man. You realize Stefano wins stuff, right? <laughs> I get it. I get trolled. I get it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Moving right along to GSL Code S. Time to pick some semifinal winners. Alive Genius, Gumiho, Dongregu, they play. Is that is that Thursday night for Tosis? Yeah, the 23rd. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go in depth with this a little bit. Tyler, have you been watching Genius play PVT? Yeah, but I don't remember it, man. My memory is so bad. <laughs> it's all right. I've, been, I've seen every Genius game, though. I just I can't remember what happened to them. <laughs> Makes you wonder why you watched all those games, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is, though? Is I learn things about the game, but I don't remember, like, how the game went that I learned it from. That's what but, I kept like... telling my parents about my grades at college, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I can't throw to Artosis here to pick these, because he's just going to talk about it on the GSL anyway. Uh, he'll pick Nesty. Yeah, and that's pretty sure Nest T is going to appear in the finals and win it. <laughs> He's going to behead a nerd. Whoever wins, he just beheads him with a broadsword and takes the trophy. <laughs> I feel like the two players riding the most momentum going into this finals are Alive and Genius, which is really cool because they're they're the two playing, right? Yeah, Alive Genius, and Alive Dongri Genius, Gumiho. Gumiho Dongri. Yeah. I think that's crazy. Like on the one hand, I think Alive is at, at right this moment playing the best Terran on the planet. Which I don't. Yes. I don't want to say he's the best player, the best Terran player, because that needs to be proved over time, in my opinion. But yeah. he's playing the best Terran right now. Okay. And then I ask myself, do I think Genius is playing the best Protoss? And I think that one's more under contention. I, 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 you could definitely make an argument for yes, but I could also entertain an argument for no. So I got to pick Alive there, and then Dongregu Gumiho. I think Gumiho suffers from being the lesser name. For whatever reason, yeah. that guy, like, when you look at those two names, it's like, Dong Regu, like, oh, it's that guy who's been on interviews, he's won in the past, he's outspoken about balance, he's fun, he plays a great Zerg, um, and then it's Gumio, and people are like, uh, Gumio, yeah, he, he's played pretty good games, you know? So, like, <laughs> my gut instinct is always to pick uh, Dong Regu, but I guess what I would warn the public is, like, Gumiho's been absolutely on fire going up to this, too. Like, and not just Speaking to the obvious, uh, he's in the top four, so obviously he's playing amazing. He's actually, if you watched his game, has been playing pretty electrifying StarCraft 2. So that one, it, I think Don Regu still gets picked, but I'm just saying, it's not it's not as clear of a favorite as people cut. think it is. I, I guess, Dan, your thoughts, even though you're going to see him again on, on Thursday evening? <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, well, I say one thing here, and I think about it for two more days and rewatch the games, and sometimes that changes, but... Uh, 
I think DRG takes out Gumiho. Okay. Uh, but for a live genius, it's really, really difficult. Genius knows some things about Protoss and PBT. Like, he knows that if Alive does certain builds, Genius knows how to kill them without argument. Like, he just, he puts, he warps and zelts in his main to stop drops, he sits everything else at the front, he gets a certain number of claws, and he goes and kills you if you were too greedy in a certain way. Like, I haven't figured out every single little thing that he knows, but there's, like, real clear patterns in what he's looking at and what he's killing. So if Alive studies the hell out of it and plays just right, he can take him because he is, I think Jeff is completely right, he's not necessarily the best Terran player in the world, but he's playing the best Terran in the world right now. But uh, I I think I give like a little edge to Genius here. And the patch is not live on Korea yet. So when so. does that go live? Friday? I time? think it goes live after... Uh, the GSL. Oh, but that's I, really nice. Of them. Fucking conspiracy. I, I'm just hell? saying. I think that's <laughs> probably it because it, I turned it on today and it was not on. So that's you know my what'd be guess. funny is Dongri will return to the land of the non-patch. So no, <laughs> it'll no, no, no. I'm sure it'll be up before uh -oh. finals. Like, but yeah. it's not up today, so I would say it's probably not going to be up tomorrow. There you go. Uh, we do have one last thing to discuss. GSL Code A last night. E.g. Going up against uh, TL. I P E L T A C is what I'm saying. <laughs> Todd, did you watch that live? I watched it live. Jeff, did you watch that live? I do more than watch things live. I'm in the house where two out of the five guys play it, man. Yeah. So what what were your thoughts, I guess both of you, just in general on last night? And then, of course, the important matchups uh, that you guys obviously were cheering for one of the, uh, the players in it. You want to go first, Tyler, or? Tyler doesn't like to go first, Jeff. Come on. I don't want to go first. You don't want to? No, I don't want to. Okay. I'm, I'm just offering because I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm a gentleman. Um, I mean, the obvious thing is it's... I mean, first and foremost, Jeff's a friend of mine. He trains with us all the time. Amazing achievement. Just an absolutely amazing team. Anytime you get an all-kill against any team in one of those leagues, because they're all pretty damn amazing teams, it's, it's an accomplishment. But to do it against your rival team... Um, Chef is an underrated Team Liquid player. Like, anyone that plays with him knows how damn good he is. But still, when you hear people talk about, like, tournaments, Chef is always, oh, yeah, Chef could do pretty good, I guess. But he's actually a monster. <laughs> um, so it's just amazing. Just an amazing accomplishment for him, and I'm happy for him. As an EG guy, it was embarrassing. It was disappointing. It was, it was sad. And I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll no-fluff the fuck out of this thing right now for a second here. <laughs> Um, let's go above and beyond the result, okay? Uh, EG never wants to get all killed. EG never wants to lose. So that was that in and of itself was terrible. But the way that we lost is really disheartening. It's one of many tragic, um, underwhelming performances that we've put out as a team uh, across three clan leagues right now. We're, we are not in the top of any of these clan leagues. We're doing quite poorly. Um, people are calling a lot of things into question, and my knee-jerk response is to yell at them and be like, you don't understand, and, and you know, you're just wrong. But to be quite frank, they're not too far off the mark. Um, I, our team needs a kick in the ass. Our team needs to sit down and refocus and say, you know what? These clan leagues matter. Individual performances are great, but also performing as a team is really important. And right now, EG is not playing where they should be. And I don't think there's anyone that would tell you otherwise. And that's from Alexander Garfield, or uh, Scott Smith, or me, anybody. So this was uh, played a few weeks ago, and excuses can be made, like cross-server or late night, whatever. But they're, they don't belong here because we all have to play in those conditions. Um, Team Liquid right. had Korean players on standby ready to go as well. Um, and they were going to play cross-server, and you know it's just the way it works. So... On this day, I can tell you that T uh, EG is embarrassed, and their tail is tucked between their legs, and it, sh it cannot continue. Um, we're actually internally going to have a big talk with everybody on the team about refocusing and, and what we need to change to make our team better for the future. And you bet your ass it's not going to be a lighthearted rainbows and bubblegum kind of talk. It's going to be a stern, what the hell's going on and what can we do to fix it kind of thing, because this is not the kind of stuff that EG wants to do. We don't want to... We don't want to have in control on a, on a uh, state of the game or Sir Scoots on a live on three giving excuses and, and explaining why that wasn't our day. You know, we, uh, we want to be the team that people are like, wow, congrats to Team Liquid on their narrow victory or their hard fought battle where they just barely lost, as opposed to, EG, what the hell just happened? So, <laughs> Tyler? 
Well, I mean, just ignoring the rivalry for a second, I, I feel like just Liquid, focusing on Liquid, um, we had some tough results in Team Leagues in 2011. And uh, the article on TeamLiquid.net that, you know, said what the best foreign team of the year was or whatever, that, you know, put EG and Liquid tied was controversy, controversy. And part of the reason was that you know, Mouse had the best team results and, you know, people were looking at the individual results between EG and TL and it just seemed like TL didn't belong there or whatever. And I just feel like this is a little bit validating for us because, you know, it's only been a couple of months since that article was published and, you know, we're kind of proving that we belong there. Um, so that feels good. I know that these are results that we could have been getting last year, but for whatever reason, you know, we weren't getting them. And now EG's in that spot where obviously they could have gotten better results than that. Obviously, on average, they're, they're going to not get all killed by Sheth every single time with that lineup. Uh, not that Sheth isn't a great player, but, you know, sometimes the results just don't come. So I'm happy to see Liquid getting the results now. Uh, as for Sheth as an individual... Again, ignoring that it's EG, just looking at those individual players, the Muslim, JYP, uh, Idra, Puma. what else was that? Puma and Machine. Like, that's a sick lineup to 5-0. And so that's just an amazing result right there. Uh, but I think for the rivalry, this is obviously a chapter in the rivalry that Liquid is happy to, to put in. But I, I feel like it's, it's something that's going to happen. Like, you know... People are going to get 5-0 back and forth, and I think EG is the type of organization that, like Jeff said, they're not going to just overlook this. They're going to take this seriously, and they're going to make sure they're going to do everything they can to not let it happen again. And that's why I think this is going to be a lasting rivalry that the fans are going to like for a long time, because both organizations are going to bounce back from whatever troubles they have, and it's going to be even more intense the next time we meet. Because nobody is going to be saying the next time we meet that, oh, well, Liquid's obviously going to win because we won the last two times. No, like, they it's going to be intense. Be that, <laughs> well, yeah, everybody says everything. Though, People say so. everything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I was just making sure. Just making but I just, sure. yeah, I mean, like, people respect this rivalry, and I think there's a good reason for that. So I'm excited sure. to see where it goes from here. But, I, I mean, I don't think there's that much more to say about it. Um, just kind of recapping the, the week's events in terms of uh, player switch-ups. Rain disbanding, shitty for all, especially for Axlov. Jeff, did you... Did, did he have any warning that this was coming? Do you know? No. Um, I mean, I actually had the opportunity to do, the, like I said, the scanner sweep show that IPL puts on with Cats, Pajamas, Doa, and we yeah. had Frank Fields on there, who's Murray. Murray, yeah. Um, and it was awkward. I'm not gonna lie. And again, I I try to be no fluff as a, as I go. And um, it was an awkward place to be because I think IGN kind of came to their own realization that they were not getting the return on this team they wanted. There were some signs, some kind of writing on the wall as far as they were concerned for why yeah. the team was moving in the direction they didn't want to. So they pulled the rug out from underneath Rain, and it looked like it was pretty short notice. Which, um, if your heart wasn't bleeding for Axlab in particular, then let it bleed now, because that's really sad. But, I mean, the story kind of goes even beyond that. Like, Frank was uh, the personal owner of this team. This is his, like, passion project he raised up from VT. Right. And it's it's like a community-grown team that went big time, got the big IGN sponsor, which is one of the biggest sponsors you can get um, in terms of a team. And, boom, they're closed. They're done. They're dead, you know? Um, that was pretty sad to hear. And for us as a, as a player base and as a community... That's not a good thing. There should be nobody that's like, oh, well, you know, another day. That's actually a really bad thing. That means yeah. a major investor looked at a team, said we're not getting the money we want, and they pulled it. So that's that's an example for other potential investors saying, hey, IGN, why'd you not do that? And they'll be like, oh, you know, or you know, they'll, they'll shoot them straight or they'll keep their books covered, whatever. But the, the bottom line is that's moving in the opposite direction we want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do have a quick question. question about that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> sure. Did that disband before Axlab used his one name change to switch over to RGN Axlab? No, it came after. And I was thinking it, making a joke like about Like right but... after, like literally a day Because that's the first thing that actually hit my mind, as weird as that's that may be. Because I was like, there. finally, there is another name change. And 
that's just really sad because he changes it over. He's like, all oh, right, and then he like clicks on Team Liquid and reads the news. He's like, oh. I think Green is... bought him a new account and they made they named it differently. Uh, and then afterwards, he got a name change, and then like a day later, his team collapsed. So it's actually a really bad spot for Axlev. Um, yeah. Axlev. Well, then a day later, he got banned on Twitch too. So it was just bad news for that guy all around. Axlev, if if anyone's listening and they're um, if they're a team person, he uh, you know not to speak for him. I actually you know since he left the house, I haven't talked to him as intimately as I did before then. So I don't know what his team status is, but he is a player on the rise, his stream's gaining notoriety, he has quite the reddit following, um, he's one of the best streamers to watch if you want to learn, up there with Artosis uh, in, in terms of Protoss play and he's playing the best Protoss of his life I think he still uh, plans on going to New York, obviously um, it's all expenses paid, but some team better pick up that guy and give him a sweet deal if they can, because he's worth every dime um, I, I just, I, my heart bleeds for the guy it's just terrible luck Trying to look to see who he plays first round. He's going up against Violet first round there. His nemesis too. Yeah. Is ridiculous. Yeah. And the Violet had, Violet has always beaten him, and he's and I w I'll go as far as to say is like Violet is inside Xlav's head. Um, the good news is there is a loser bracket at yeah. MLG, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not even saying that to be mean. It's just like yeah. Xlav will have another chance. Right. Right. Can you like that round again? Can you like the bracket? Push Wait, you see the bracket. Which one? Uh. His bracket's ridiculous. Well, the bracket in general is ridiculous. Man. Pretty sure both brackets well, are pretty I mean, ridiculous. I mean, he, he wins, <laughs> but if he wins his first round, I mean, the second round's not as nasty, but then the third round is ridiculous. Yeah, third round, he's probably going to have to play Naniwa, Losira, Marine. King. Everyone's third round. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. What easy third round his, happens to him? His first round's crazy. I mean, he's got Violet. Second round, he might make it out of that, but third round, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Complexity announced <laughs> three new players. Um, help me out here, Jeff. Nada was one of them, which was Nada, the biggest killer, surprise to me. And Hart. Hart and who? Oh, Killer. That's right. Killer. Sangho. Uh, Dan, you're pretty good friends with uh, with Killer, aka Sangho. Did you know this was coming? Uh, kind. Of, I didn't know it was going to be this team, but he's really been looking hard for a, a new team, a foreign team, because he's really uh, wanted to do foreign events specifically. For quite a long time, like since he started playing StarCraft Two, so I'm glad that he has that opportunity. That's great. And I'm trying to think: was there anything else in terms of player announcements? I'm just fascinated by the finances of it, man. Nada has got to be as expensive as they freaking get. That's true. But and, who, who uh, was the player that Complexity had to like spearhead their team before him? Uh, Drewby. Well, it was Nanny for. For a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's I guess he replaced um, Nanuwa, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Inori to TSL is another one, but I, I want to talk about complexity real quick here, too. Like, yeah, feel free. Um, one of the, and, and again, I don't have any insider information on complexity, so maybe this is well within their budget, but I just, those three players, that's huge signing, which inflates Definitely. the roster to what? Like, like not even the complexity MVP, MVP partnership, I'm talking just raw complexity. That's like nine guys, right? Right, nine or ten, something like that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they drop some of those, though. Really, that's I, that's the fun speculation to talk about. Is where <laughs> are they going in the future? Like, um, just no fluff. Nada did not sign for cheap. No freaking way, man. That guy yeah. was one of the first StarCraft players to charge an appearance fee. Meaning, if he goes to your tournament, you paid him money. Um, right. For him to be on supporting locally, Tyler. Oh, I gotta thank my team sponsors, Little App Factory, Razor, and Twitch. You guys are all supporting Team Liquid, so thank you for that. And I got a little bit of announcement to make. Not a very specific announcement, but I've got an approximate date for the Streaming Marathon Challenge. Oh, oh damn. It's, it's going to be I'm sometime in... For this ship. Yeah, it's going to be sometime in early May, and uh, I don't have an exact date, but... Early May. I'm going to be moving like in mid-May, so I need to do it before I move. Wait. <laughs> so that's like... Where are you moving to? Deadline. I don't know yet. Okay. But I, I'm going to be moving. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna be moving. <laughs> I might be moving too, but it might be before then. Uh, Artosis? Yes. Shout outs. Uh, By the way, are you getting well, a haircut before you come into... 
Today yeah, or, I'm gonna to today or tomorrow. I'll get okay. a haircut. I might. I right. actually like. I need a haircut so badly, man. I have like this mop of terrible hair on my head right now. Yeah, I notice. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we it's noticed. pretty bad, guys. We're your friends. Um, we just want to make sure. Continue on with your sponsors. All right. So, uh, oh, the Artosis Hour. I started a new show uh, on Twitch.tv forward slash Artosis, and they're gonna be up on my YouTube starting today as well. Check out the thread on TeamLiquid.net or Artosis TV on YouTube. Uh, it's just my new show where I just kind of analyze replays really, really deeply. Like, really deeply and dryly. So, Real deep. Uh, it's, deep and dry. It's deep. It was Quite balls combo, deep, guys, bro. on those replays. Real yeah, deep man. and dry. dry. No lose. Uh, what crazy, a weird man. adjective to use to describe how you replay analyze, by the way. <laughs> and there's Can a baby in the back of you. <laughs> deep and deep. anyways. Real deep. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> check that out. And, um, oh, also I was just on... Uh, Duncan Trussell's podcast. Oh, He's like okay. a really. How, how was that? Huh? How was it? It was a lot of fun, man. Duncan Trussell is actually okay, so awesome. funny. He's a really great comedian, guys. So uh, you can check that out. It's up high on StarCraft Reddit, and I tweeted about it uh, a few hours ago. So just check my Twitter, and you can get a link to it. But okay. check out that podcast. This is actually kind of a cool and big deal. You know, uh, this is like a legitimate uh, great comedian oh, that shit, that's right. loves Starcraft, and that's just, that's something that can only help the community, so check out his podcast, give some support. Uh, yeah, that's it. Are you done, Dan? I'm done, man. Jeez. Let me make sure we're recording, because I took a lot of shit on the internet today. Jeff, you know where I'm going. I'm gonna see if Tyler or Artosis decides to back me up or leave me high and dry here. Let's do it. Well. So earlier today... I tweeted that one of these things is not like the other in uh, regarding... Did you see this, Artosis? You got that No, smile. I didn't. I'm, like, really excited, oh, he's though. he's so excited. <laughs> what Dan, is this? What are we talking did about? Did you see this, Tyler? <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Okay, fun times ahead. Do it. Do it. So there's this panel that's going on at MIT, and uh, it's got Sean Danine Plot, uh, Alex Garfield from Team Evil Geniuses, Sundance... Uh, who else, who's the other guy, Jeff, that I'm missing for Mark, some reason? Mike Morheim. Oh, yeah. Ma wow. Mark Morheim, a.k.a. Mike Morheim. I don't know why they misspelled that or whatever. It's okay. It's all right. It's a common name. And then Leah Jackson. Which one of these names is not like the other? Dude, don't be sexist, man, just because she's a girl. So, that was the first response. The second one was that you... Had a thing for her nine months ago, so you're obviously still jealous. It's not true. Um, I, I feel like, and I'm just going to address this personally, um, for someone who wrote a G4, uh, kind of for a trending topic at the time, and then if you look back, the topic kind of died out, and there were no articles written or anything like that, and now all of a sudden she's at MIT. I don't care who's actually there. I feel like a DJ Wheat, a slasher, and in control... Uh, anyone but myself, because I don't really care to be there. But it could have been a little bit better represented, um, in my opinion. I feel like she's probably there for G4. And the other reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people are asking. Um, I think that's the point that, that people missed out on. They thought that you were, like, hating on Leah specifically yeah. and just saying, like, you don't like Leah, she shouldn't be doing that. That's not right. the case. That's not the case. Because I think the important point to distill from this is you're saying this is a super panel of StarCraft well, people. It is, and it, this is also one of the biggest things that we've done in terms of esports and going into the mainstream. Like we're on a fucking panel at MIT. Like that's it doesn't get really bigger than that. With, with people like Jeff Van Gundy, like other fucking crazy, really super important people from mainstream sports. But I mean, I, I want to get the rest of everyone else's thoughts here just to see what you guys think. So you can tell me and put me in my place if I'm wrong here. So, Dan. I'm putting you on well, the I spot. Mean, I'm going to put Tyler on the spot as well. I, I can think of some reasons why they might want her to have there. Right. Want to have her there. But, uh, yeah, of course, I mean, everyone else is, like, super duper high up in the industry. Like, almost, you know, tip top, basically. CEOs and stuff like that. So, it's like three CEOs in day nine. And, uh, I mean, there's very few fifth people that even will seem like they fit, to, to me, be honest. To me, isn't the, the easy answer wheat? I, yeah, I mean, of of course, DJ yeah. Wee is someone that's higher rank than uh, Leah, for instance. I mean, there's there's a big list, though, you know. 
I mean, I'm, I'm not saying a, like I'm gonna fucking boycott the goddamn press conference or whatever it is. No, I mean, I'm means, sure we'll but, all end up watching it. Yeah, but. I liked Adam's point earlier um, that she's a journalist and that's very that true. She's there specifically to moderate the panel, so I like that. Where I think your point gains ground, and <laughs> I'm gonna clarify this in a second, is just that she's kind of gravitated away from StarCraft and is more now just a generic, like, gaming journalist. She still does right. some StarCraft. We're not trying to take that all away from her, but she's not a StarCraft II journalist, like a slasher or a personality like a DJ Weed or something like that. So w my, my concern, and what I want to clarify, is that the, these are the concerns about her, is that she's not quite fit for the role, but my hope is that the event comes around and she knocks it out of the freaking exactly. park. So well, how all about our this, concerns are, are like dust in the wind and she just exactly. does awesome. Who would you put in there? Because if you look at it, it's we, it's a commentator. Hold on. A commentator, right? Oh, you're gonna uh, go we around. have a CEO of a league, a CEO of a team, and a CEO of the game company. I got, I got Those are four very different things. So if we're going to put in, if they want a journalist, who do you put in there over her? If you want a journalist, that's an actual you put in, journalist. That's an actual journalist. You put in a volley, but he's working for EG, so you can't. Yeah, so maybe slasher or something. How dare you? <laughs> I'm no, I'm serious, man. Like, who? What other journalists Sorry, do we man. have right now? It's like, uh, I mean, I guess uh, Chobo Peon stills around, kind of, but might, uh, Leah might is a bit more famous than him, I would say. I would agree. Uh, you know, she works for G4 TV. That adds credibility. Definitely. As opposed to just like someone who writes for various websites that no one's heard of. Right, right. right. and that's so also it what kind of makes sense. That's what I also posted. Like, I get that she's from a mainstream gaming website slash, well, like a TV channel, and I get that that's probably why she's there. But with the panel that or the people that are on the panel, I feel like they could have, I don't know, maybe digged a little bit deeper, but. I just wanted to clarify that because I caught a lot of shit on the internet for it today, so I figured why not? We'll bring it up on State of the Game. Tyler, you've just remained quiet all episode long. <laughs> well, I'll comment on this. Okay. I think I think the what we don't like about it initially is just that we don't feel like there's anything she could say to us that like we would learn from that no. much. You know, like I don't mean that in an insulting way. I just mean like if you're gonna ask like a just an average StarCraft II fan who actually knows who all these people are, you ask them, like, who do you think you're going to be most interested in, they, they would probably say they're least interested in, in her and what she has to say. And I think that's just... If we're going to present ourselves to other people, well, then we want to put our most interesting people forward. And titles, like, you know, what their job description is or what they've actually done don't matter as much as can they actually say something interesting to whatever audience this is? So, I don't know. That's, that's at least how I feel like. Like, I'd rather see a pro gamer there that's rather true. than a journalist. But like, then why who moderates it? Then someone from MIT? Like, is that the answer? JP, man, you're the best moderator. Look at you. No, but then right that's self-serving. Like, I would, not actually accept, I would not actually accept that because Sundance is on the panel, so I couldn't do we that. Well, no, you're, still, you're pretty good at moderating, though, actually. You're my favorite moderator. All right, guys, I paid the money. I'm sorry. Let's move on with the show here. <laughs> Jeff, did you have any thoughts on it? Just pushing forward, like, it's important that people understand that, yeah, there's concerns, but at the end of the day, this is a huge step forward for the StarCraft II community. It is. And it will not, it, would, it just does no one good to poo-poo it because it's going to happen whether, like, yeah. Leah doesn't step down, MIT doesn't revoke her invite or some shit like that. It's going to happen. Definitely. And whether she's a loyal worker within the StarCraft 2 community or not. In this case, she's doing something very important for us, so everyone needs to support it, and, and hopefully it does amazingly for everybody. Well, I think she's going to do a good job. Yeah. Like, I think she's going to play a vital role there, so maybe she's not the best, but she's going to contribute there significantly, you go. so I think that's fine. All right. And that's going to do it, so I get to piece together this fucking shit show of, like, six <laughs> different copies. It's going to be a long fucking night for me. Uh, but that'll do it. I apologize for the infrequency of this show. Are we going to come back to this time each each week, guys? Is that is that what's Where's happening? Tyler obviously hates it. I mean, look at his face. Yeah, I'm so tired. <laughs> Dan doesn't give a shit because it's 1.30 his time. I don't know. Uh, you know, and 
if it's we not get too every, early if, like you did it before. That was ridiculous. Have you tried to get that guest on our show, uh, Day Nine? Is he? I've I've <laughs> reached out to Day Nine. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. He's very hard to get a hold right. of. Um, he does this Day Nine daily thing. It it messes. You just got to go in too, deep but... and dry with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in there. I'll send Artosis in. He seems to be the deep, deep dry. And dry. Dude, I'm really good at that operative. stuff. He's... <laughs> My brain is self lubricating. <laughs> oh, the thing is, like you know, what you do you get a you get a recording device and you just you just check what you say, man. <laughs> oh shit, that's it. See you guys. I probably next week. I don't know. I get home on Tuesday back into Galveston. Probably not going to do a show then because I'm going to be tired. Uh, we'll see you when we see you. I don't know. That's it. We'll see you guys next time on the next episode of State of the Game. We're out. Peace.